again, here we go again, here we go again, straight yes one in here, here we go again. It's your boy James Wanna Supply on BBCRadio.com. It's your boy, uh, Aries Lounge. He don't know what his name is, he don't know where he at. It's been a while, I guess. Aries Lounge, BBCRadio.com. <laughs> it's your boy, Jazz Wanna Supplier. I got Ill Will in the building. Nope. I got... Yeah, he really don't know I where we're I got Busy doing. in the building. We, he really don't know where we at. I got the Yeti in the building. Nope. Okay, I'm sorry. Wow. I got... Who is DJ Pill yeah, 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 in the yeah, building? Yeah, 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 That's him. That's him. We back on deck uh, post-COVID. I'm still here, niggas. He ain't dead. I ain't dead yet. I was close. Yeah, Not really. I wasn't was, close at all. Was. I was nowhere near close. <laughs> From what I've heard, other people dying. I'm, I'm, I was nowhere near yeah, any of that yeah. shit. Uh, if anything, it was forced vacation time that I didn't want. Yo, that's probably the, something that you needed. Let me tell you the most fucked up part. Uh-oh. My father was like, "Yo, so you don't need to take no, you don't need to take <laughs> no vacation or something. You just took a, a three week vacation." I said, "Oh, that's fucked <laughs> up, b." <laughs> That's fucked up. He talking about, yeah, well, you know me and your mother, we about to go to the Dominican Republic. I said, hold up, nigga. Yeah. Hold up. How the fuck y'all niggas going yeah. to the Dominican Republic and ain't invite me? Like, not saying that I want to go with y'all, but nah, nah, but you good, though. You already took you your vacation time. <laughs> Yo, I ain't even get paid for that shit, man. Fuck that. That's, Yo, so, that's, that's sick time, pop. That's, that's time, grimy, bro. grimy, grimy. Yo, first off, I want to say, like, at the top of the show, thank you and, and shout outs to everybody that looked out. Uh, you know what I'm saying? There's so many people that reached out to me. There's so many people that uh, offered assistance. Some people actually assisted. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Pill kind of assisted. He asked me if I needed something. And then I said, yo, I want some food. I, he didn't pay for it. I paid for it. He went and picked it up. And I delivered And then he made it shit so long that the food was cold as fuck oh, when he boy, finally dropped cold. it up. Nigga, you were an hour and a half late dropping the food I was an hour up. late. An hour and a half late. Yeah. Talking about I saw somebody in a parking lot and I needed to suck his dick. Yo, I'm like, Whoa. yo, why you couldn't wait Whoa. until I don't even know if you got something on the, on the food, but I was so hungry. I was like, yo, I'm about to die. Whoa. I need to, yo, I needed some food. This is yo, it's fucked up, bro. Whoa, it's fucked up, yo. You fucking circle jerking niggas in the parking Whoa, lot instead of just pause. yo. You could have you could have got the nigga phone number and said pause. yo, I'm gonna drop this food off to my homeboy. I will holler at you pause. later, but no, he wanna be goddamn. Oh my god, kissing pause. and hugging and pause. holding on niggas, yo. I was never did nothing yo. like that. Yeah, all right, cool. In my life. Um. Also, I want to shout out to Busy, uh, Brianna Talia. I mean, I ain't going to go into everybody. It was so many people that show love. Uh, you know, Tippy Tall Girl. Uh, so many people, yo, that showed so much love, and I appreciated it. Like, it meant a lot to me. Uh, I'm so popular, yo. I'm not. But it's nice that the strong friend can be supported sometimes. Yes. And I may not be the strong friend, but I, I, in my view, I feel mm-hmm. like, damn, I look out for a lot of niggas. It's nice to be looked out for every now and then. Yeah. So, like, and I appreciate it. It meant a lot. Thank you, Pill. Regardless of what you was doing in the parking lot, behind tinted windows, I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Um, yo, like there was niggas that sent me money, like just random shit. Like I, one of my cousins I ain't talked to in like 10, 15 years sent sent me a get well letter and a twenty five dollar money order, which I thought was really weird. A money order, my nigga, like <laughs> that shit was, and it was an international money order on top of that. So, so but that shit was lit though. You know, shout out to her. I you appreciate get to cash it. that out. Of course. Oh, bro. I know how to get this cash, bro. Okay. I know how to move this money around. I'm All good. Right. But, uh, and then there was another artist that I, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool with. And, like, that's, that's, that's like, you know what I mean? He the homie. I mean, like, I never, I, like, you know, we deal with a lot of people. A very lot of people. And I might even consider them cool and kind of friends, but I don't know how they think sometimes. Okay. So it was amazing for this one particular artist. They just send me some cash through my cash app, just on some like, bro. I just want you to be, you know mm-hmm. what I mean. I know you're going through something. I just want to show my support. Like we gotta hold, we gotta hold our community down. That's like, I was like, damn. I was so it almost made me cry. I was like, damn, like real support. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm so uh, appreciative. Like it, it just really means a lot, and it shows that where we are as far as a community. Like yo, for real, this. I've been saying it, and I keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it because I really want niggas to understand. Like, yo, in Baltimore, we got a music community. We do have a community. DJs, artists, 
radio people, people that's serious about their radio, people that's really into this. There is a community, you know what I mean? And we have to support each other. Uh, you know, some shit happened in the community, and I'm I'm gonna be talking about that today as far as this 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 art this person that raped some women in our community and but at the same time I just want y'all to understand this is a community and we have to have we gotta be responsible for each other. We have to be willing to support each other. We have to be willing to, you know what I'm saying, do what we can just so that we can all continue to grow and, 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 and get up to another level. You know what I'm saying? So like yo shout out to all of y'all. Thank you again and it meant a lot. Uh I am 100% back on point. I'm back to work. Everything's cool. Um, I'm turn. I'm about to turn up for real because there's a lot of people that hit me that's trying to get down and get get some stuff done. So like, yo, we've got some new episodes coming. I got a lot to say. I got a lot I want to get done. So like, we about to get back moving. Uh, shout out to everybody that uh, dropped comments on all of the reviews and on all the episodes. It's definitely been dope. We really appreciate y'all. So. Uh, how was your father's day, Big Daddy? Pause. Pause. Yeah, pause. <laughs> nah, it's Father's Day. You, you, you the big dad out here, man. You the father. Um, Father's Day was cool, man. I, you um, saw his father. I um, I got to do something different this Father's Day. And um, that was. I went to a bikini contest. Oh hell yeah! yeah. Hell yeah! That's some shit a nigga was, should do on a Father's Day. Look it at was, some titties and some rumpus. It was, it was definitely. Wait a minute, where was it? And why wasn't I invited? That's fucked up, bro. You ain't even reach out to a nigga and say, "Yo, son, you want to go to a bikini contest?" I was. I was supposed to know you was. You was back. How do I know you love bitches? Like, what are you talking about? I know you Father's when he was last weekend, nigga. I know you was alive. <laughs> that's, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. You ain't shit, boy. Boy, you ain't shit, boy. I tell you, yo. But yeah, um, I need yo. Somebody out there want to be my co-host, yo. I'm, look, I'm looking for a new like friend, co-host, like homeboy, so I can get rid of this nigga, yo, cause he ain't shit, bro. They do, um, so they they do the the, the contest every every other Sunday, I believe. So that's way too often. Bikini contest every other Sunday. Where is this at? It's on the other side of the bridge, across the uh, Bay Bridge. Um, it's, it's oh, so it's mostly white girls. Yeah. Okay. Mostly white girls. I'm still with it. I'm still yeah, with it. Yeah, mostly white girls. It was a splash of black hair in there. Okay. It was it was definitely dope though. Like I, I yeah, it was a different experience. Was it me. a lot of women though? There were a lot of women. Okay. There okay. I'm with it. I'm women. with it. Um, of course, good share of men as well. Wherever we don't care. Well. Yeah, of course we don't care. Um, <laughs> like, don't we fucking but, niggas. Um, one of the dudes I work with, um, you know, shout out to Ferg. He the man, man. He uh, he hit me and was like, yo, just come through. I got the VIP table. You don't have to pay nothing. You know what I'm saying? So I drank. I, I oh, drank and I had my a phone, good time. man. Did I get a text and I missed it? I, I, got, I, I, I drank and I had I don't a good see time. nothing about I'm going through our text messages. I don't see nothing about bikini contests, VIP tables. Free get in. I ain't bring know, your not, ass I ain't know on. nothing about that till I got The there. only time you hit me is when I bought something on the group <laughs> account and you were like, yo, did you spend this money? And I, I had to send to you that sure. cash. That's the only thing. Hold on. Maybe it's before. Maybe I missed it. Hold up. No, no. Fizzles, shit. And pause, no homo. And then look, look, okay. So the last thing, you ain't said nothing to me, bro. Nothing. No messages, no nothing. How was I supposed to know that I wasn't going to pay for shit until I got there? Who man, what doesn't matter? I got bread, nigga. Yeah, I could, I could have got a oh, sin. You, I got, got, you got money, uh, money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold up, hold up, nigga. What? You got money, oh, money. Oh, you want me to punch you in the face now? That's how I you want to play games now. You said you, you so, said, I'm, so now, said, so now I, I'm good. Broke, I could have got us in. I never said you was broke. I'm broke. But so yeah, that's how you trying to play games, day, huh? Father's Day was. Good I got a brand new car. Bro, come on, nigga. I'm in a I'm in the best shape of my life right now. Right, New I, clothes. I, I, I gotta put it. my shit. I love it. I love it. That's fucked up, bro. I love it. I, I see how we this go is. next Sunday, yo. No, nah, yo. Anybody that's been a long time a fan, Aries Lounge, this how he been. <laughs> no, it's when like it come how down been. to my shit, this I invite everybody, I bring niggas along, this ain't how I, been. I show niggas love, I make sure niggas get in, I make sure niggas are straight. This ain't but how when I it come been. to him, he move on his own. No. He don't call my phone. No. He don't invite me to that's shit me. unless he needs somebody to give him a ride, put some bread no. up for him. That's the only reason why he, yo, that's please, fuck out of here. That's, that's When the last time you invited me to some that's shit? That's not me. When the last time you invited me to some shit? Yeah, 
Last, exactly. last time I've been to some shit was Father's exactly. Day. Exactly. No, it wasn't. It was yesterday, nigga. You was oh, at some yesterday. shit yesterday, but yesterday. he knew not to invite me to yesterday. that shit. I don't fuck with that. None of that. I know you wasn't going, but I posted it. You could have pulled up if you wanted to. What the fuck I want to pull up to some bullshit for? One nigga that owed me money. <laughs> A nigga that you circle jerking with and shit. All, right, all of the enemies, yo. Uh, you friends with all I, of the enemies, I, yo. Yeah, Everybody I, that fucked us over, they his I best cir- friend, I guess yo. I circle jerk everybody. It's all good. Uh-huh. Move right along. So Father's Day, you went to a bikini party that you didn't invite me to. You had a great time. I don't know what that got to do with spending time. Did you take your son with you to the bikini party? Why would I do that? Because he need to see the titties early. No, my son can't go to that. <laughs> Damn, yo. You ain't even trying to raise your son right. That's crazy. That's like that five. You got to learn sometimes. <laughs> yo, what is crazy? What's wrong with you? He, gra- he graduated pre-K. For real? Yeah, he Did you do something pre-K. for your father, yo? Did you do anything for your pops? Uh-uh. No card? You didn't no. give him no bread? My, my father don't celebrate holidays. So he would look at you like, why are you asking me? That? Why are you telling me that? Like, what, what, he Jewish or something? What's going on? No, he just don't like celebrating holidays. Damn. He looks at holidays as That's sad. He looks at holidays as just a reason to spend money. So he don't celebrate Maybe. Christmas, birthday, Thanksgiving. Nope. I mean, Fourth of July. He do it because it's forced, but it's not like if he had a choice, it just it, it wouldn't be a thing. So like, you just don't do nothing for your father. You don't never just do nothing for you. Buy him some shit. Get him some jeans. Buy him a phone. Like, go do something. That's fucked up, G. Is that bad? That's super bad, yo. Why? Yo, if, you don't if, even want to do nothing to be if, like, yo, pops, I love you, yo, here. Let me do something for you. Let me show you some love. Like, I mean, yo, I copped you some yeah, me, yeah, me. He was like, probably looking at me like, why are you buying me this? <laughs> tell him because you gay and you want to sleep with him. What the fuck, yo? You whoa, his son, whoa. nigga. You are his son. I, I, why I, why I, you should be saying that? But if I, I'm telling you, yeah. if I was to do something like that, it'd be like, oh, I don't need this. Oh, I got this. Right, Offer of this depressing ass nigga just, here, yo. You, I'm you done, yo. A I'm done I'm with you, yo. Because everything you talk about, everything you do is just depressing, yo. Like it's so. I'm starting to get a better understanding of you. You know what I'm saying? But it's depressing, yo. So on Father's Day, I went to go see my father. Mm-hmm. We had family dinner, yeah. of which I went and spent a grip on jumbo shrimp. Just for my pops, well, we went out there. We had a good dinner. Watched. He put me on to a new TV show. We get into that later, and I. And we, now the thing is, the reason why I don't really do a lot of like, oh, I'm just gonna surprise a nigga with some shit, because my parents buy everything they want. When they see a phone, they want, they get it. They see a tablet, they want, they get it. They see something, they want, they just they just they don't wait for nobody. They just get shit. So you could have had an idea on some shit. You like, I see, I might see a book and be like, yo, my mother would love that. I will go to my mother's house. She will have that bitch. She's already in that motherfucker. So I went. You know, I spent over twenty dollars for this jumbo shrimp, a pound of it. I still went to my pops and said, "Yo, what you want for Father's Day?" So he sat there and was like, "Yo, I want a case." I pulled up cases on Amazon. I gave him my phone. I said, "Pick one you want." He picked the one he want. I swiped it, paid for it, and had it delivered to his house. Nigga, like, I'm not saying you gotta go. Yeah, you know I mean, pay for a trip to Acapulco, but. Come on. Now, he might take that. I'm quite sure he would. He, he might take that if I Shit, get him a trip him to the Dominican Republic and, and prepay for some prostitutes and, for him, yo. Let him get his dick sucked and some ass, you know what I mean, so he can come back and be a, a, a new man. Like, yo, it's not cheating if it's another country. It's not. It's not the same. That's female logic. <laughs> Where did you learn that from? <laughs> I, mean, you know, I fucked a lot of bitches in my lifetime. <laughs> you start to pick up their bad habits. Yo. What's up with you? <laughs> Wait a minute. Did a, girl, did a girl try to pull that off on you? Yo, it's not cheating. It's another country. <laughs> that's, that's, that's domestic. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um. Shout out to all the fathers out there. Yo, everybody. You know I me. Mean? Show love. Well. Pill, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I mean? That's crazy. This nigga Yo, Pill you, is crazy. You can get you one. You can get you a, uh, a child. And if it ain't happening in 41 years, probably not gonna happen. Nah, I don't. So um, you stop pulling out. I was. I, I stopped pulling out at 30, so you, you, it still ain't working. It's not working. I guess my dick don't work right. So what's been going on in your life on regular life? Um, like I said, um, the only 
one big highlight is that my son graduated pre-K. There you go. Um, Congratulations. Went, didn't get invited to that party. He's, there was no party. Dang, you didn't have no party for the pre-K? No, they didn't even graduate. They did Damn. a virtual graduation on the computer. Damn, you could have sent me the link. I would have um, pulled up on the virtual link. Cash that in three dollars. <laughs> All they need is some candy. What the fuck you need to give him a whole lot of money for? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we um yeah, well, he uh he did the graduate thing. He going to pre uh, he going to kindergarten next year. Mm-hmm. Uh well in real school now. But um <laughs> you know, it took him go karting. you know. We had a good time. But um other than that, I ain't been up to nothing. That's good, yo. I ain't been up Being a father, yo, that's that's the most important part. I'm trying. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, all right. This is, should be kind of fun. Okay. Can we make plans for the summer? That's a real question I have. Can we actually make fucking summer plans? We could. <laughs> at this point, we could. Is it a good idea is the better question. That is very smart way to articulate is, is, that. Is Thank the you for doing that. The better question is a good can, idea. Should we do it? We can do it. We can do it. The better question is should we do should it? Should we do you it? Know what I'm so, saying? what's your answer to that? I say no. You, so we shouldn't make some of them. I say no because a lot of the. I'm down there looking at Ocean City Airbnbs right now. I'm really trying to just three days, bro. I just want three days. I mean, no, that's that's fine. Leave on Friday, take Friday off. Leave Friday morning, check in. You know what I mean? Take three hours to get down there. Check in around noon, mm-hmm. maybe one. You know what I'm saying? Get a couple. You know, we meet some nice ladies, yeah. and you know yeah. what I mean, and have some fun. Like, no, I got it. Yeah. Now, the, my, my problem is I don't drink or smoke anymore. So it really puts me in a difficult position because you really can't do shit. In Ocean City, I just gonna sit on the beach most of the day. Oh, that's and gay. Eat. That's gay. I can most go shopping, but most of that shit ain't gonna be popping. It's gonna be whack shopping. Um, so I don't know. Um, I guess Ocean City is fine, but um, with all the openings and things going on right now, there will be another wave of coronavirus. That's just what that is. No, no, that's a, that's a already, fact. It's already it's already happening. Like all the That's places that were opening that opened first are shut down again. You wanna go to Vegas? That is like Corona Vegas Central. Is open open right now. And they're yes. super open open. Like they are back to normal normal. Word. Um uh like uh Jacksonville, Florida, I think they shut down. Florida shut shut down. Florida, the whole Florida? No, nah, I think Jacksonville just shut down. That means Disney World's still open though. We can go to Disney World. And, uh, I've been wanting to go see the Star Wars. Thing, thing. I've never been to Disney in my life. It ain't. I'm, now that we old, it it probably I mean, if I'm, you was a kid, your son age. I'm I'm gonna go because I have to take him. The but. worst thing that happened to me is me going to Disney at 19. Damn. I went at 19 and it was trash. I was like, I don't care about <laughs> none, none of this. Of this. Zero. Okay. And then like I went with my parents, so like all of the adult stuff that you would normally because they have like an adult like clubs and restaurants. Really? And stuff. Now yo, Disney gets everybody's money, bro. <laughs> they don't play games. They get everybody's, they got everybody's money. money. Like they got some. Yo, they got they got chicks that dress up like Mickey Mouse, and you know what I mean. Like yo, take you to the little you know Wonderland, and yeah, Wonderland. yo, they got the whole nine. Yo, you know what I mean. You get your bubbles and you know all that's, that. That's interesting. So like they got all type of stuff down there, and I couldn't take advantage of none of that because I'm with my Me peoples parents. and I'm 19, so it's Me not like I can really bust up in somewhere and, and and you know give me some Mickey and Henny. You know what I mean? Like that didn't sound good at all. But you know what I mean? Like it wasn't no like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no Jolly Green Giants or whatever for me. Couldn't get none of that pause. So, um, yeah, I, you know. But it's still open, I mean, so if you want to go, just so you can say, all right, I went there, I it was lit. I definitely got to go. I also want to do the I want to do the Disney Cruise, too, though. I'm not. I've never been a fan of cruises. Like, no. I'll, I once again, it's something that I'm like, oh, I'll do it just to say I did it, but I don't feel like I'm going to have a good time. You've never been? Never been on a Yeah, career. you'll probably love it. And you'll be the one to love it. Word. Yeah. I thought I was going to hate it. Word. Well, all right. Why did you think you was going to hate it? It was amazing. Like, it, the, the, of course, the ship itself is a... Uh, wait, you said why is the reason I, I liked it? No, no. Why did you think you was going to hate oh, it? Oh, because it's water. This, it, the, That's this, not it at this, all. I this, love water this, and I love boats. This boat 
on this big massive thing of water. I watched too many movies. Um, and what I, Speed Two? That was trash. <laughs> so like Titanic. Speed, speed Two was <laughs> like what? Titanic. Yeah. Titanic was about a poorly designed and built. That's boat. not the point. It was about a boat on an open body of water, and it crashed into an iceberg. You're not taking a Disney cruise to the iceberg, bro. You don't know where they're gonna take that Disney cruise. You ain't driving it. <laughs> Yo, before you get on, they tell you where they going. And when you wake up, you're going to wake up the next morning and say, well, wait, this ain't where we said we was going. And the Titanic is like, what, 50 to 100 years old? That's not the point. You're missing the point. Yo, te- the boat, boat, sank, te- damn it. boat technology has improved has advanced, yes, has drastically, drastically advanced. in 100 years or you're whatever. you're talking to somebody that's ter- okay, that can't, you, that can't swim. You. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> what? You can't swim? I can't swim. Oh, that's real life right here. This is crazy. I was about to be like, yo, I'll teach you how to swim. That's gay. <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> I'll put you on with some people that can teach you how to swim. Like, that's crazy, yo. Like, I got to learn how to swim. You know how to float? You fat. You should float. Nah, I don't know how to float. You got to learn how to float. That's that's the biggest thing in the world. All right. So, should we do the cruise? I heard that was a Corona shit on the cruise, nigga. Yeah, yeah, Corona's everywhere. It's, it's not a game. All right. So, we canceling summer. <laughs> so, we officially canceling summer? God. Aries Lounge is canceling summer, yo. I would say so. My thing is, yo, I don't want to sit in my apartment. I did that for the last three, four months. Uh-huh. You want to do something. I mean, you do something. Just protect yourself. I just want a prostitute at this point. Well, there's plenty of them on Baltimore Street for $40. I went down on Baltimore Street, and it wasn't <laughs> really popping for real. Or, and the bitches got on my nerves, and I was only there for 10 minutes, and I was like, yo, get the fuck away from me. Or you me, can man. go Dundalk and get, bring a chicken box with you. I was, I was thinking about it. <laughs> Take a ticket box Jeez, down no, to Dundalk. They be wanting Newports and all that and then and liquor. I mean, like, I'd be tempted. Just I'm trying to... I'm, first of all, let me clarify something. I'm not trying to say I'm giving up liquor forever, but I'm just trying to... Cut back. Yeah, no, not cut back. I'm just trying to not do it for a while. Oh, like, okay. You know what I mean? Get five or six years of not drinking and then come back hard with it. You know what I mean? You ain't going to want to drink no more. And then, like, come back at 50. Yeah, just really, not, really go hard with the whiskey game drink. and die. You're not going to want to drink no more. Yeah, that's true. But I'm saying, you know, we'll see. Um, so yeah, we canceling summer. Fuck it. Um, that's it. All right. So movers to find you a prostitute. Got it. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about this because normally our friends watch this show and it puts certain things into perspective. So, so nice in there. I stopped drinking per- for a personal reason. It's not me dying. I wasn't hurt. I wasn't physically nothing. It was just. The last, like right before I got COVID, I had, I had not drunk for like two weeks, and then I was like, "Yo, I'm I'm gonna have my cheat day, and I'm gonna have a fifth of Hennessy." I got my cigars, and I got some. Yeah, I didn't drink the whole thing. I didn't make it through. I got now. The problem was, after not drinking for two weeks, I sat on that couch. And just started watching television, and I started throwing back shots, not shots, but like cups. And I got stupid drunk by myself. Smoked a whole pack of them cigars, oh, yeah. like a ten pack. Went to sleep and woke up the next day with my head bang. Yep, it yep. was banging. Hangover. And I came back and I was like, "Yo, I drank seventy five percent of this fifth. God damn! And one night sitting still God on the couch damn. watching television, bro. <laughs> That's when I was like. Nah, bro, this is too much. Damn. This is this is way too much. And I spent, I literally spent a day and a half recovering from that shit. Yeah, so you you should have just bought like a pint. Yo, I was. I let me tell you how bad it was. I don't like taking any medicine or pills. Mm-hmm. I had to call Tippy and be like, Yo, please. <laughs> I beg the please, yo. Can you? I like. I can't go the way. I can't get out of bed. Please, can you go and get? Can you bring me some 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 pills or whatever? I need some pills. I was like, my head is. Banging So she went Got me some pills And dropped it off To a nigga And I, I was like Thank God for her And I went back to sleep When I woke up And I felt a lot better But I was still You could still feel that yeah. I was just like Yo this is not cool I just didn't I was just like Yo I just need I don't need this no more yeah. I need to step away From this shit <laughs> You know what I mean Even that The, the smoke and having the inhal- You know just having the, the remnants in your lungs And all that I was like yo I, I, I'm supposed to be Trying to get healthier I'm supposed to be trying to get into a better place. I'm on a diet. I'm like, bro, well, I need to stop this shit. So that's when I was like, all right, you know what? I don't need to do this no more. I'll go out and make you lose weight faster. You would think. So anyway, um... No, oh, no. Not drinking alcohol will make you lose weight faster. Because of sugar. 
Dark liquor has sugar in it. The problem is, is that you gotta replace, cause liquor and, and cigarettes fill a void. Yes. So when you don't have those two things filling the void, you gotta fill the void with something else. Something. So what I what I've been doing is sherbet, ice cream, but I try not to drink a crazy amount of it. Reason why I'm saying sherbet is because it doesn't have the dairy in yep. it. Um, the stuff that I'm getting is not high on calories. Uh, I got a bunch of like snacks that are like healthier, like you know, um, cashews and almonds and stuff like that. So I've been trying to do that. So like, hopefully, I mean, I have lost some weight, but it ain't like drastic. You know, what I mean, it ain't life changing, but it's it's all right. That's good. You're losing weight though. That's the goal. Yes, and to be healthier. Right, right. So while I had coronavirus, the world. Got real. The world went fucking ape shit. And I'm on my couch. And I'm watching it on my phone. And it's pretty intense. So, what's your perspective? Like, you know what I mean? The George Floyd pass. Breonna Taylor pass. Um, some other niggas got, died. Then we rioted. Then more people died. Uh, then we started protesting instead of rioting. More people died. Uh, the police came out uh, as a collective, and it was just all white dudes. It was like 30 or 40 white dudes standing in front of one microphone talking about we're being treated. <laughs> Yo, to me, that was the most hilarious shit I'd ever seen in my life. We've been mistreated. <laughs> you are, what are you saying? You've been screaming at us. You have been treated, you know, you've been uh, talking about us in a way. Welcome to being black. I was like, oh, damn, this is crazy. Welcome to being black. Oh, shit. So people are throwing stuff at you and they are being verbally abusive of you. And that's all. Oh, Father God. Uh, The world is in me. Father God. (laughs) What? How dare they treat you that way? How dare you? Don't you you police what? Mm. How can people misjudge you or mischaracterize you in such a manner? Did they shoot you with a water hose, Yo, too? No. Did they say that you were, like, monsters? Mm. Or that you, oh, man, how did they do that? Wow. Like, yeah, why would they do that? America, no. what are you doing to these white men? What? Y'all need to stop that shit right now. How dare you treat these these guys that kill his, people? Uh, uh, you just channeled your inner Birdie Mac. Yeah. How, America. America. Let me talk to you real quick. Let me, talk, yeah. Yeah. Let me catch you on the camera. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> I'm going to put the camera yeah. to you. Right? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm watching this shit like, yo, do you not hear the... I'm, the whole time I'm like, do you not hear the hypocrisy and what the fuck you saying? <laughs> like, are you serious right now? Are you seriously crying on camera, nigga? You grown. These is grown niggas. All of them niggas. It was 35 niggas and they all had gray hair looking like Santa Claus. Like, it was a Santa Claus reunion. It was like niggas that was signing up for Santa Claus early. You know what I'm saying? And they out that bitch talking about y'all can't mistreat us after all that we've done. Yeah, I understand, my nigga. Like, because we donated 400 years of activity to this (laughs) motherfucker. Like, for real, for real. Donated? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was to, a donation. It wasn't a donation. But I'm trying to like, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to be like, yo, I mean, like, we, we, you know, there was a lot going on. So, I mean, I understand, like, donated. your frustration. But at the same time, like, you know, <laughs> the same way you don't like to be mischaracterized or treated unfairly or talked about in a manner that you don't like, it's the same reason why I don't like these white bitches being on the news talking about... You know, black people have a riot, and we are thugs and this and that and the third. I don't like being characterized as a thug, nigga. I'm at home. I'm watching television on the couch, drinking too much, and trying to quit. Like, I don't appreciate all the crazy nonsense. I don't understand. Now, I felt for you, Mr. Police Guy. I did. I was like, damn, yo, this nigga worked his whole life. I mean, he didn't beat a whole lot of black people, but one or two black people he beat in the head, it wasn't intentional. It just, you know, it's systemic racism. He don't know nothing about He don't even know that he racist. Yeah. Man, he might even got a black grandson because his daughter went out and fucked a nigga. We, I mean, like, I understand your frustration. Wow. I do. That escalated quickly. I do. However. However. We are in a scenario where the only thing we want... Is reparations. We'll come to that. Before we do that, don't listen to him. 
Pay attention to me, camera two. <laughs> camera two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I want is when an action is taken by an individual and you kill somebody for whatever reason, whether it was self-defense, whether it was murder, da 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 that person, whether they're having a badge on or not, should be charged, should be jailed, should be put through the court system, uh-huh. and there should be a determination made. Uh-huh. And if there is no proof that this person could have avoided the scenario, mm-hmm. meaning that they could have let the nigga go or done enough, if we see that this person had a thousand different options outside of k- killing the person and the person did it anyway, did that person go to jail, regardless of they wa- whether or not they wear a badge or if they don't wear a badge? Or if they're a judge or a billionaire or an influential person, if they white, black, Asian, you know, Latino, you know all the cultures. Only thing I'm saying, Mm -hmm. while you crying on a stage, the easiest thing for you to do is to go to the people that you know are not doing right, even if it's you, just do a better job covering it up. But if you see other people, the best way for you to cover it up is just go and clean house where all of the other niggas is doing fucked up shit. And hire people who will police and do their jobs correctly. It's the same thing as if I had a burger joint and I kept pissing in your burger and you getting mad. And I'm going, why are you getting mad at me? Because the first thing you're going to say, nigga, stop pissing in my goddamn burger because I paid for it. That means they got to hire and retrain, though. Yeah, because they're training. But that, no, that not even long. just that. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because you can retrain, and, and people still actively govern. Now, the other component is: I put the law in place. You shoot somebody, you have to go to trial. Period. Then, I don't. I'm mean, not saying that I don't care if a black person gets murdered or any person. The point I'm trying to make is: is if when somebody catch, steps out of line, they have to go. They, they have to deal with the consequences of it. That's gonna make a lot of motherfuckers. I don't give a fuck whether you train, untrained, need to be retrained, overtrained, undertrained. You're going to stop yourself if you know there's a higher potential of you going to jail by pulling that trigger. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's so far. It's, it's, it's been that way for years. This is the only way they know no, how to. It hasn't been that way for years. There has, the, the rule as, as it pertains to the to police and for the military mm. is that while you wear that uniform, you are considered above reproach, meaning that you have a higher moral fortitude. This is the assumption based on the system that we created right. how many, many hundreds of years ago. Right. We created a system where if we give you this badge, the assumption is, is that you have a higher moral compass, a higher moral standard, right. and that you will use the power that you've been given by the state and the federal government to make judgment on how to deal with individuals while you are out in that uniform on that time clock. So, generally, if you kill somebody, we assume your innocence, and we will most likely just push it to the side because you are above reproach, or you are of a higher moral compass, a higher moral standard. That's the historical. The point I'm trying to make now is, is that fuck all of that higher moral standard and the assumption of you being responsible and you're thinking correctly, and we're going to treat the the police department like we treat any other company or corporation. When somebody does something inappropriate or, you know, wrong, you are... You are fucking charged for it, and you have to be dealt with. You're fired, you're investigated, you are whatever the situation may be. Taking responsibility. You have to take responsibility for your actions. Whether you are in the uniform or not in the uniform, your actions must be accounted for 100%. Not a smack on the hand or I'm going to send you home and give you two weeks off or pay vacation or, you know, we're going to look at you real mean when you come into the office on Monday. Nah, nigga, you shot somebody, you got to go to court. And you have to deal with the repercussions of shooting somebody or killing somebody. Because murder is murder. Death is death. You taking away somebody's life is an issue regardless. I don't care if you're the president. Everybody should stand trial in those instances. I understand it's frustrating and it's unusual because now... There's a dynamic, there's a 
paradigm shift in how we are going to function as a society, but that's just a necessity. When you find out things are not running right, you have to change it, period. And you guys standing out in front of a, 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 a police department crying that you're being treated unjustifiably is still hilarious. Moving on. But they're being treated unfair and unjust. In addition to that, I have seen a number of funny and interesting and weird. Now, the riots didn't bother me. The police overstepping their boundaries didn't bother me. The protests didn't bother me. Uh, black people losing their collective fucking minds. I hate to say this, but y'all niggas is funny as fuck. Uh, seeing black people lose their shit. Especially the most gangster niggas that talk the most gangster shit on social media. And they be all this, yeah, I fuck niggas up. And I'm this and that. And then they the main ones going, I can't function. <laughs> it's the world is losing itself. <laughs> and I'm like, oh boy. Why would y'all shut the fuck up? Did y'all not see this coming? Honestly, did you not see this coming? Really? Really? Nice. Really? Nice. Really? 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 I'm sorry. I got caught in the loop. But... <laughs> Nah, I ain't see it coming. That shit was funny to me. Seeing black people lose their minds. And I know niggas will be in the comments like, fuck you, Jay. How dare you? We have been dealing with this. I've been triggered. I've got, I 100,000% agree with you. However, <laughs> you guys all collectively be deciding to become rappers, producers, and actors, and YouTubers. What the fuck do you expect? Ain't none of y'all niggas doing nothing to prepare yourself for the outcome that has come into play. Hello. When your parents were saying become lawyers and doctors, and when your parents was telling you to get educations, to get your finances up, to get your political power in place, when the last generation was telling you as they was getting their asses beat the fuck down and bitten by dogs and hosed and niggas was marching and talking about equality, all of that shit y'all kept saying while y'all was in school about how you hated history and what's the purpose of us studying history and what's the purpose of this shit? Guess what, nigga? This is the purpose. And so that you learn so that you don't repeat the past. And guess what? This is just a repeating of the same shit that happened 50 to 100 years ago. You're making me feel bad. Oh. For being a I'm sorry. A college I'm sorry. dropout. Yo, you want me to get the police guys on the phone? See if you can yeah. come down and hang with them? No. Oh, all, right, all right, cool. Man. I'm just saying because they feel bad too. Like at the end of the day, <laughs> go back and listen to any one of Malcolm X's dozen or so speeches that are recorded and put on YouTube. Go watch any, go watch or listen to any of a dozen uh, speeches from Martin Luther King. And these are the only reason why I'm bringing them up is because they're the most prominent names that 90% of the world knows. But there are literally hundreds of people. They know Al Sharpton too, yo. Go listen to any one of a dozen Al Sharpton speeches. Don't do that. No, nah, he's cool. He's a, he's a good orator. I'm not going to trip. At the end of the day, go listen to them and hear how familiar the story is. How all of these things that we're dealing with in 2020 kind of mirror all of the frustrations and the dealings of that time period. It is so sad and depressing to hear grown black human beings from America still crying and begging for the same shit that they was crying and begging for 40 and 50 years ago. Y'all niggas is so stupid that y'all have not even developed a better way to deal with the same fucking problem that we've been dealing with for 40, 50 years. Me included. Because I've been running around <laughs> trying to be a rapper and radio guy and all that, so I'm fucked up too. You know what? But guess what? What you gonna do to change it? Ha <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Today is the top 10 things niggas need to do. I mean, cut the nigga out, and I'm going to put black people in there so that it doesn't seem as offensive. Things that I've already started doing, and my suggestion to every other black person... Putting out a mixtape. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Yo. Fuck no. Buy the mixtape of all your favorite songs and give it to the white and shout people. out to Lil Baby for dropping the ill-ass song about the whole situation or whatever. Yo, shout out to him. Nah, nah, definitely no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm more upset at black people than I am at the white people. White people been doing the same shit forever. You got the white people that feel bad about niggas' actions, and then you got white people that's like, man, fuck them niggas. 
It's the same shit. They been doing the same shit. They been on their political shit, keeping niggas down. They been on their financial shit. They been on. They been on this shit, bro. They ain't never stopped. The game ain't never changed, bro. They it haven't. Just, it just look a little different. They just look a little different. It just look a little different. The word, a little words different. change a little bit. Right. That's all. Look a little different. Guess what? Black people still living in the same hoods they've been living in for the last 50 to 100 years. It's like the word minority. What do you think that means? Black people are in a worse N- financial... <laughs> hold up. Black people are in a worse financial position they've ever been as a society since getting out of slavery. Bro. Really? Because 50 years ago, the black community had more assets and had more money. Oh, agreed. Well, that's because I think... I, I would think because black people worked worked harder than though. Are you talking about what generation? You already made a statement. I'm letting that go. That's what you said. I'm letting <laughs> that rock. I'm moving on because I don't want to get caught up into this moment. Right. The only thing I'm trying to say is, is like, yo, what have we done better? But like you said, drop more mixtapes and create more music. Like, and mind you, we've created more millionaires out of those mixtapes and albums. But what are those millionaires doing? Nothing. What are those people? Now, I am salute the Diddy because what he did, I thought, I mean, that's what I feel like you should do. Now, I don't feel like he's doing enough, but he's still doing something. Him getting politically involved, salute you. Him creating revolt news was important. Now, the launch and rollout has sucked balls. But like, yo, at least he did it. He, he did took it. our idea. And the reason why I'm saying that's important is because we need our own platforms to be able to voice what the fuck is going on in our community so that we know how to make moves. If you don't trust MSNBC, you don't, y'all at least uh, 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 appreciate and respect Puff. Shit, you buy your Ciroc from this nigga. Y'all dance to the fucking music. You follow his fucking Instagram page. So I would assume you'd at least give him... You know, five minutes at a time to check out the news network and maybe believe what the fuck he's talking about. Nah, but yeah. I, I like that. I like us creating a platform so that we can communicate to us and our community. That's an effective thing to do. You know, and there are other people that have done some effective things too, but I ain't got time to get into all of that. It's a long fucking podcast because I got to deal with rape today. I got to deal with some other fun shit. I got fun shit on here and I, it's fucked up that I got to get the funny shit with the, with the bad shit. And get, but you know what? Rape. I've been gone for three fucking four weeks. Actually, I've been gone a month and some change. We'll get to that. Calm the fuck down. And next time, read the rundown before the microphones get turned on. So anyway, stupid motherfucker. I did read it. Lastly, social media. Before I move on to some other shit. Interesting. <sighs> what about social media? Black people. Oh shit! Here we go. Black people, black people, black. My, I you're, love you guys. You're good black people. Good bl- and the black, bad black people. Good, <laughs> and the bad ones. Good ones. Black people. You're good black folks. Oh, good black folk, bad black folk, <laughs> all the folks. <laughs> Sit the fuck down. Get the fuck off social media. No, yo, they was bored. I see. TikTok, yo. TikTok. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I don't. I still don't even understand what TikTok is. TikTok blew the fuck up. Yeah, people two, was in the house. Years, bored. Which is, does anybody know that China controls TikTok? It was, a, it was an app developed out of China. And China uses TikTok as a way to get information about Americans and to take access to and control of people's cell phones. If you don't believe me, Google it. I'm not even trying to talk. I'm not. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is a fact. Like they have talked about it in the U.S. Congress and the Senate, nigga. Like this is some real shit. But I don't give a fuck about TikTok. TikTok your life away. Who gives a fuck? The only thing I'm trying to say is, black people, take a step back. Look at your timeline. You look at your timeline. All of the crazy. I've had so many too far, women man. and men. I've had so many com- conversations in the DMs or in text messages or in phone calls of black people, my black people feeling, I'm overwhelmed. It's too much. I don't know what to do. Like, I feel like I got a headache. No, niggas was telling me they had physical ailments because of all of the stuff. And I'm like... The phone down. down. Watch some television. Go jerk off. Cook a meal. It's always fun. Pot some plants. If you look around my apartment, I got mad plants. It's not because I really love plants, but I need other shit to help clear my mind, to relax. 
Go buy furniture. Even better, go design some furniture. Find something productive to do with your time. Get the fuck off of social media. And I'm not saying permanently. I'm not saying delete the app from your phone. But don't let it be... You have to recognize when you keep picking up your phone every five minutes. And you got to look. And you got to be involved with everything. Yo, you can be a social activist once a day, bro. You ain't got to be on that bitch every day, all day, looking for memes or, you know. We don't all need to know what you're thinking every five minutes. Because don't nobody really give a fuck. Oh, yeah. No, that's true. Don't nobody give a fuck about me. That's true. How the fuck you think I ain't been posting for like a month and a half? What the fuck do you care? Niggas was trying to, Somebody told me, yo, you need to be documenting your your coronavirus shit. No, I don't. Why? Who gives a fuck? Why? If I die, I'll get one day of, oh, damn, my G, he did. Oh, God. He was a great man. He was a dickhead. Yo, he said funny shit. He was a wild nigga. I know what I'm going to get. And then y'all going to move right on to the next thing. Bitches talking about being single. Niggas talking about getting pussy. Everybody talking about social injustice. I'll be gone and forgotten in a week, nigga. At least you'll be, at least you get a week. You going to get a week? I ain't going to get a week. You not going to get a week? I'm going to get You like, going to get a day and a half. I'm going to get like 30 seconds. You going to get a day and a half. That nigga dead, he gone. Nah, that's not cool, bro. <laughs> that's <laughs> not cool. I got a montage video I'm going to put together for you, yo. <laughs> no, don't of do that. Of all of our greatest moments together? <laughs> Come on, bro. I'm you, you, yo, I'm your, I'm your homeboy. Well, I think I am. I mean, you don't call there me. There we for go. Shit. But I'm go just saying, book. like, yo, you my dog. I, I would at least do a montage video. So I'm gonna speak at your funeral. That's gonna be, yeah, you yo, do, are you comfortable yeah, with me videotaping it? Video, I can videotape the speech, like me talking over your casket. Now, why would you do that? You can put that on social media. Yes, yeah, so I can put it on social media. No, no, no that, I'm that, trying to stretch a day. Look, no, you said a no, day and a half. I'm trying to give you that week. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Then that adds to what you're saying. Social media. I'm going to keep putting your mixes out yeah. so that people can, like, re-listen to it. They'll probably flag them. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be post-humorous mixes from DJ Pill. <laughs> yeah, they'll probably flag all of them. <laughs> you don't think you're going to get more than a day and a half? I don't know, yo. It's tough to say. That's true. That's true. It's really tough to say nowadays. Yeah. A, lot of, really a, lot of niggas, a lot of niggas died in Baltimore, and we was like, yup, that shit happened. Yeah, well. You know that nigga? Yeah, I know that nigga. Yeah. All right, well, move on. Moving on. I mean, like, yo, I, I, at the end of the day, I don't even give a fuck, because it's not even really important to me. But at the end of the day, but what I am trying to say is, yo, for your mental health, I'm, I'm doing this for black people for your mental health. Thank you. Get the fuck off social media. Go find somebody, fall in love, and sit your ass down. Ooh, I signed up for softball. Congratulations. Don't do that because he might get corona. <laughs> this nigga is destined to get corona. He is out here trying to get corona. Yo, just go to the hospital and bust in one of them rooms, nigga, and just inhale deep. Like, yo. <laughs> Sit your ass down. You spend time with your family. To do. Yeah, spend time with your family. Go play softball. Go fall in love. Go play softball. Softball. That's the gayest shit ever, yo. Anyway, all right. Get some exercise. Yeah, go get some. I, that I agree with. Yeah, go be healthy. So uh, that's all I got to say about that. Whew. The fuck off social media. I know that was a good 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And we ain't even gotten into the news and we ain't got into the next segments yet. And I, for, I forgot the top five. All right. We're going to go to a commercial, y'all. Keep it live. Damn. Aries Lounge, BBC Radio. Com. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. So, I don't have a friend. What are your turns on as far as I men and women? My coins. What do you mean? All right. Because you like girls too, don't you? Me? Yeah. Um, They're cool. <laughs> Where the gunshots at? She really took a shot at y'all ladies. I didn't. She I said, y'all like, cool. I ain't going down on you. Listen. <laughs> you can I'm get a finger. To, listen. You ain't getting no women, tongue. <laughs> women are beautiful. Listen, I go on my Instagram every day. Go though. ahead. Mm -hmm. Tell them. fucking women, boy. I know. What the fuck is that sound? She'll lick a nipple. <laughs> but she definitely not going down I've on I've licked you. a nipple before. Right. But she not finna to go down to your crock pot. She is not finna uh, to go crock pot up. It's I'm not. not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Listen. You warmed the crock pot before? Whoever I warmed their crock pot. Hello. Is the only person that knows. We are gonna find out who I that warmed. is and get them on the show. Will never find out. Oh, she not from here. Going. Okay. And we're back. DJ Pill. <laughs> Damn, that was a good. Your ass boy commercial. James wanna <laughs> supply. We back Aries Lounge. Oh, it's the news segment, bro. We got to talk about news. Damn it. Yo, number one thing on the list, I'm actually impressed by 
uh, because both of these niggas need it. Gap and Yeezy have partnered up to create affordable. Now, my question is, what is affordable to Yeezy? Because if they drop a hundred dollar t shirt talking about this is affordable, I'm slapping the shit out of somebody. Well, that's, that's Yeezy for you. No, that's not and, affordable. And, and niggas is gonna buy it. So anyway, before I get into being critical of, of Yeezy, um, I mean, excuse me, Kanye, I think this is a great. I think this is a great thing. I think if he really sticks true to creating affordable clothing, uh, Gap has not been doing well at all. When I say they ain't been doing well, they were that's close true. to going out of business. That's true. Uh, so you think Kanye can help? I think Kanye is a huge help in this particular scenario. I think even with black people feeling like they got an issue with Yeezy, I think if he comes up with some basic, he don't like like what like he don't need to come up with complicated shit. He can just come up with simple, cool, comfortable clothes right. that are not Kanye crazy getting, price. Depending on the Kanye we gonna get. If we keep the t-shirts at twenty and the jeans at forty or fifty. Less. You come out with some, maybe less than that, ten, fifteen dollars. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like you are gonna get. First of all, Yeezy is going to be a trillion dollar company. It'll save Gap. It'll widen the marketplace, and it's gonna and it's gonna further cement Kanye as a billionaire. I 100 percent agree. Depends on the Yeezy we get. I'm with. Kanye, it. Depends on the Kanye we get. Um. All right. So the next thing. And I hope I don't forget to put this edit in. I have a video I'm about to play right now <laughs> for my chick who's explaining why we getting fireworks. All right. We'll be right back. Do I need to show you? I need to show you the video. Have you seen the video? No, it's like a white girl talking about some shit. Okay. So let me go to my gallery. Uh, let me go to down here. And regrand. And. Here she is. There she was, just a woman. Do you really think that it's a coincidence that when protests against police brutality start, the city starts to sound like this every night? <laughs> Complaints of illegal fireworks have gone up 80 times of what they were last year. And they're not little firecrackers. All these fireworks. Every night from 8.30 to 3.30 in the morning. These kind of fireworks are not cheap. Who has the money for this? Who's got all this extra money lying around? In the backyard of a precinct? The US has used fireworks as a tactic of psychological warfare against protesters since the 1950s. It's a tactic to wear them down through sleep deprivation and heightened levels of anxiety. This was Harlem at three o'clock in the morning. A parade. They're doing it to create justification for not cutting the budget. In cities across the country, police have been retaliating through psychological warfare. So, ladies and gentlemen, another individual has stepped forth with facts on how we are inevitably fighting against our government for what? Defunding the police? That niggas are scared that the police, the police are scared that they being defunded. So they're, pl- they're they're shooting off fireworks at all times of the night to fuck with your head. That's crazy, B. That's crazy. What do you think? I didn't know. I just learned something new today. So, um, damn, that was that was very insightful. I didn't even know that that police or military did that. You know, to you know disorient you or which makes sense because you know it. It's a loud noise. It takes you, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck was that? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It takes you totally off your game. I damn, damn. And if, and like, I, I was out with, uh, yo, this really sounds crazy. Like, I've mentioned Tiffany, Tippy Tall Girl's name so many times in this podcast today. It's Don't get no ideas. So me and T- Tippy were out driving around because I was bored of shit and I ain't had nothing to do. So I scooped her up and then we started driving around. And we was at some stoplights. And the fucking fireworks go boom. And she started freaking out. Like, and I'm like, yo, calm down. Like, she's just like, I don't. It bothers her. It's, yeah, it's a trigger yeah. for her. You know what I'm saying? And, a, and, it, and it's been triggering for a lot of people. Like, this is the thing that, that really scares me because I feel like I'm a sociopath because it doesn't, it doesn't. A lot of shit hasn't been bothering me. Like, it doesn't bother me. Either I'm really, really fucked up or I'm a sociopath. So, anyway, and I'm, I might be both. But at the end of the day, like, 
I can see how what Shorty's saying, it can have such an adverse effect on you. You know what I mean? But I don't know, bro. It's just like, it's like that included with the thing with the video I seen of the police officers putting bricks in front of buildings and police officers just standing there while people get killed and hurt. It's like, yo, like that that's insane. Like you guys are doing so much Damn. to try to influence or to 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 I don't know. It's just crazy. Only thing I can tell y'all is education, 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 education. People let off fireworks in the middle of the street now. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And like on top of the education component, I'm saying is yo, and I said this earlier, like stop being so emotional. Take emotion out of it and start looking at the business side of it. Start looking at the politics. Start looking at, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, yo, let's let, let's start. St- like, these motherfuckers is thinking strategically. This is a whole lot of strategic shit. It's by design. <laughs> Who designed it? It's all, it's all by that's design. Easy, that's, that, that's an easy statement to make. It's, yo, this is by design. Who designed it? For what? And at what point? Was, and, and look, this is the even deeper question. Was this designed because they knew this day was going to come? Was it designed because of something else and they just decided to implement it in this? There's a whole lot of questions that even making that statement bring to the table. And without education, without research and development, we can't find the answers. And if we can't find the answers, we can't find solutions to deal with it. And for us to continue to sit back and just say, it's by design. We're supposed to be fucked up. You don't, it puts you, you continuing to put yourself in a bitch position to be treated like shit. And to be abused and to be taken advantage of versus putting you in a position to go on the offense and to create solutions and to defend yourself. And, and this is where I'm trying to get y'all to. So anyway, that was just something for the news. Number three, Kim Kardashian inks deal with Spotify for a podcast. You're not excited about that, are you? Fuck yeah, I'm excited about that. A Kim Kardashian podcast? Like I told you with this Joe Rogan shit. I don't know if we had a chance to talk about Joe Rogan before we went on break. Well, coronavirus. But <laughs> did we talk about Joe Rogan? Um, I don't recall. I think we did. Joe Rogan got... <sighs> some money. Yes, I remember that. Like $350 million. Do you think Kim Kardashian is taking less than no. 40 or $50 million? Absolutely not. At the end of the day... Every step one of these celebrities make into podcast land increases the value of what we do. It adds validity to our world where it is less of an abstract, what is a podcast? or And it turns it more into, oh, you have a podcast? Because Kim Kardashian has one. Michelle Obama has one. This person has one. Joe Rogan has one. Oh, shit, that's powerful. You are getting into a, a... uh, be, you know, a more and more popular space. That's what I'm saying. That makes uh, sense. Not because I love Kim Kardashian. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. No, I'm saying, yo, there's right. niggas out here getting bags for this shit. I like how you looked at that. Let's get to this bag, nigga. I like how you looked at that. You know what I'm saying? LeBron James raises $100 million for media company. Hmm. Which one of us broke niggas used to have a media company? Me, motherfucker, and ain't nobody give me no hundred million dollars. And then people kept saying, Why are you trying to build a radio station? Why are you trying to build a media company, nigga? For LeBron James to raise a hundred million dollars, for Kim Kardashian to get a fucking podcast, for all of these people to keep jumping into this TV, radio, media space, there has to be something valuable about it. Get on your ABCs. So that you can fucking understand what's going on. I'm sorry to be preaching to y'all today. I'm supposed to be making jokes and saying dumb shit. They still ain't here. Yeah, I know. Rapper Huey shot and killed. Yeah. Do you really? (laughs) So I said that the other day, and then somebody somebody said, who cares? (laughs) I said, well, wow. Salute to Huey, because his death has lasted. What, we in the third day, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's lasting day. out yeah. there. So, like, R.I.P. Yeah, Hughes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hopefully we can make this extend for, like, a week, yo. You know, that's sad that we trying yeah, to, you know, hope yeah. that niggas' deaths ring true to some people or whatever. But um, I'll try to get some more information and bring it around next podcast. Drake's sales stats are insane. Let me go back, because I read his stats, and my life is fucked up, bro. Like By his stats? 
his sales. Yeezy sales stats, five number one albums, eight number one singles, 15 number one hot rap songs, 20 platinum and gold album certifications, 170, 174 diamond, platinum, and gold singles. 174 diamond, platinum, and gold yeah, that's singles. Pretty, that's pretty Crazy. Let me break that down. 174 plaques, meaning that he's got 174 albums or singles to have gone either diamond, platinum, or gold. That's a lot of fucking sales, bro. For one artist, for one individual artist. Uh, this is the moment where I realize I have to put respect on Drake's name. I don't give a fuck with none of y'all niggas. You can shake your head. <laughs> you don't do numbers. You ain't doing Garth Brooks numbers out here for me to be disrespecting. Let the Jew do what he do. Let the Jew do what, Let the Jew do what he do, nigga. He out here getting it on, yo. That's some crazy shit. Yo, tell me in the comment section how y'all feel about that. Do you feel like it's well-deserved or, you know what I mean, what? Like, at the end of the day, we can all hate on Drake, but I guarantee you, you at least got three songs that you like, yo, Drake, this shit is hard. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just life. That's fine. Yachty wrecks his Ferrari and is still alive. Fuck. I'm sorry. That was wrong. I was just about to say that. I was just like, I was really hoping that he had died. That was wrong. But that's a wrong thing that to say wrong. or think. Shit, that was um, wrong. And then there was a part of me that was like, he got a Ferrari? Mm. He made yeah, money? Yeah, yeah, that, that did. That, that, I, that was, when his, I read that, that's what I thought. The new album sucked. The album before that sucked. Like, they, he ain't gone broke yet. All right, whatever. Streets like him. Little Baby and 21 Savage just realized that they have been, uh, they have been bootlegging. Uh, excuse me. 21 Sa Little Baby and 21 Savage realized that people have been bootlegging their stuff in major stores like Walmart and Amazon, etc. What are y'all, stupid? They are never, do these niggas not shop? Like, if you look up jewelry, like, y'all two niggas is like the, <laughs> like, if I'm looking up jewelry, even fake jewelry or whatever jewelry, I see Savage on all type of shit. I've seen his P4F thing, which I don't still understand what it is. Y'all, I've seen this everywhere in jewelry, online jewelry stores, physical stores, flea markets. So, yo, let me break something down for y'all if y'all don't understand. Walmart, Walmart is shifting into a space like Amazon. And let me explain what Amazon is. Amazon is just an online aggregator. Meaning, if Pill decides to start selling jewelry today, he can sign up on Amazon, and then he can put his products in the Amazon store. And he can remain in that store as long as he follows their guidelines. Amazon didn't buy the jewelry from him and put it in a store. He's selling his own products, mm. Amazon is just maintaining the traffic and maintaining the sales and making sure that things run smooth. That's it. Walmart in history has never been that. Walmart has bought products, put the products in their stores, and sold it. And if things and things didn't sell, they sold it back so that they wouldn't be stuck with the inventory. Walmart has now, because of Amazon, shifted into being a marketplace for independent retailers. So, Pill... It's actually Pill's fault. Has been fake manufacturing jewelry for years. Y'all didn't know this nigga's a millionaire on the low. Pill has been out here manufacturing jewelry from any anytime he see a rapper pop off and they got a dope ass logo. This nigga goes to his Mexican niggas that he got working for him. They mock up the jewelry. They they pour it out in whatever metallic shit that he got. Cause the, I mean, you know, he ain't gonna give y'all gold. <laughs> That's his. And like he's gonna keep the gold. Y'all get whatever the fuck he give you. And then he puts it into the online stores, i.e. Walmart's new public storefront or Amazon. That's how stuff happens. So at the end of the day, there's really no legal recourse. You can try to sue Walmart. It ain't going to work. They're just going to put you in contact with the people that's selling the jewelry. Man, go holler at them. And good luck tracing that nigga down. Because this nigga Pill got so many phone numbers, email addresses, and addresses. He don't even know where he lives. So anyway, I don't answer the phone either. And the other thing, it just shows me how unintelligent you are when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you just realize that niggas is bootlegging your shit. Sad. 
No disrespect. I love Lil Baby and I love 21 Savage. You like but Baby? Unfortunately. That's scary. Uh, that's it actually for this segment. So look, we about to go to a commercial. Y'all keep it locked. Aries Lounge. Uh, I was about to say <laughs> Lil Pill, but it's uh, DJ Pill. Your boy Jazz want to supply. We'll be right back. Kraka. Yeah, right. We go rapping now, and we're back. Who is DJ Pill? Your boy Jazz want to supply. Uh, all right. I went around to some of the people I respect and know, and I asked a question. Yo, who are your top 10 favorite Baltimore records of all time? Oh, my God. So, my, my dude, Bud. Bud. You know what I'm saying? Bud. From b very own. He finally sent me his list of his top 10. So, this will give you some time to, to, to kind of put together your five. I want you to put together five. I know his life is hard. So, you... Songs. Baltimore songs. songs. Baltimore songs. Top 10 local Baltimore songs. His number 10 from Bud. Number 10 is Tim Tree's Bankroll. Disrespectful. Number 9, Take Cobain, North North. Number 8, Barnes, Tattoo Tears. Number 7, Ooh, Dope Boy. Number 6, Money Man, Harder Than Baltimore. Number 5, Ogun, Welcome to Baltimore. Number 4, Al Great, Generate. Number three, Smash, a bit too much for me. Number two, Boss Man, oh! Number one, LMS, Pure Necessities. What do you think, sir? I think... I think it's a good list. But it's... I, I think... Okay, these are their personal lists. Is it's that, his personal list. Yeah. Can't be mad. No, I can't be mad. It's it's a good list. The fact that he could put together ten, I was like, oh, yeah, I respect you, yeah, yeah, I respect yeah, you man. Nigga. You, super you definitely, you definitely did your thing. So what were you about to say? I said that's super respectful. Um, I'm I'm putting together my list as we speak. Okay. So, um, I'm gonna give you my top five, and. I'm definitely going to um, – actually, I'm going to back out of this conversation, and I'm going to let this sit, and then I'm going to come back next week with my list and then pill. That give pill some more time and me some more time to come up with this because my brain just farted because okay. I just spent all this time screaming and hollering. And, like, no problem. Hollering. But, yo, I want you guys to put me your top ten favorite Baltimore songs uh, in the comment section, or if you know me, send it to me. Uh, and I'm definitely going to be putting this out. I think this will be an ongoing discussion for a little yeah. bit because I think this is a cool this little, cool. Yeah. you know what I mean? Because, like, I, I'm quite sure a lot of y'all are like, who is Ooh? Everybody. And who is Barnes? And who is o- who Ooh? Is so, LMS? Yeah, 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 right. Who is LMS? So, like, I definitely encourage y'all to uh, start looking around and seeing what you got. And thank you, Bud, uh, for, showing, for showing up for your boy. Um, if you want to follow him, it's B Moore's very own on Twitter and on uh, uh, IG. You know what I mean? He's a dope, dope, dope writer. He has a dope blog. You know what I mean? He talks about Baltimore music. He's from Baltimore. Shout out to him. Let's keep it moving. So uh, the next thing on the docket is out of context. Okay, so let me tell you how this works. Yes, please. I'm going to show you a video. I'll show you guys a video too. And I want you to I, – I, I I don't want you to – I want you to make up. Put, what do you know? I, I want you to give me your opinion of what you think is going on in this video. Interesting. All right. So, uh, and I, I want you to take it out of context. So we're gonna watch the video together, and then this is what it is. What the fuck do you think is going on here? <laughs> what the fuck do you think is going on here? Out of context. <laughs> I'm about to tell you exactly how. All right, I'm going to start. I'm going to tell you what yeah. the fuck going on in this video. This nigga's playing possum. Because he's fucking tired of this shit. The fucking music is loud. It's little Mexican niggas in the background. 
He fucking tired of Cardi B. It's like, you know how you play dead. He was playing dead. Like, all right, come on, get away from me, baby. Like, I'm going to take you with me, but just chill. Like, you don't, don't blow my cover. Like, the baby blowing the whole cover. Like, he trying to be act like he's sleeping. The baby going, nah, nigga, you ain't sleep. Up, nigga. What's up, nigga? Let's go. Play, Let's play. He going. like, no, I'm trying to play sleep so these niggas can get the fuck. Yo, and the most disrespectful shit. This nigga's trying to sleep and their music is loud. Mm. That music is ignorantly loud. He is trying, he, he is like a slave trying to escape Yo, Offset, yo, if you need me to help you, bro, I will cash up you $20 for an Uber or something so you can get the fuck out of there, yo. Because I couldn't live in that. I can't, I can't live in that life. You can't live in that it's life. too much noise. Yo, Cardi B talk way too much. It's just way... Uh-uh. Uh, uh, and then like it's that. mad niggas in the crib. It's mad niggas in the crib. Why that many niggas in my crib? Respect, Offset. <laughs> So what's yours? What, what what you thought was happening? I thought I thought the baby was just trying to get his attention. You know what I'm saying? Like he sleep, like no, ain't time to sleep, nigga. Wake up. You know what I'm saying? I thought I thought the baby was playing the music on the phone. You know what I'm saying? Trying to wake him up. Listen, it's time That's to wake up. That's way too loud you know to be some phone. <laughs> That's way too loud to be phone music, nigga. That shit was yeah. blasting, yo. Yeah. And then you see little Mexican feet. Look at his little Mexican feet in the background. These Mexican ass niggas with the fucking sandals on and shit. They over here somewhere. You know what I mean? Nah, fuck that, man. Get out of here, man. You niggas. All right. Anyway. Wake up. That's our segment for out of context. So okay. yeah. Right. Uh if you want if you want us to uh watch a video and give out give our own opinions on what the hell's happening in the going video. On in the Send it on through. We could be wrong. More than likely, I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm wrong in this particular instance. I really feel like he's trying to play dead so he can get out of here so and fight his way out. Uh, okay. So, should we go to it? We don't need to go to it. Yeah. I'm going to go to a quick commercial. We're going to be right back. Y'all keep it locked. Aries Lounge, BBCRadio.com. Blah. And what's up, everybody? Just wanted to let y'all know uh, we were able to purchase the new camera. And we were able to purchase a new mixer for uh, from our fundraiser. Thank you to everybody that donated. We really appreciate it. We love you guys. Uh, people that ordered shirts, they are going to be on the way ASAP. Just give me a little bit more time. Just had to work out the stuff to get the other stuff. Um, all of our new content is going on paid platforms. It will still be on YouTube, but we'll have some exclusive stuff. So you can sign up to our Patreon and our OnlyFans ASAP. <laughs> it's fun. Black, we back. Uh, our only reason why I did the commercial is because I want to completely separate that last thing when we was trying to be funny from this very, very serious subject. Um, Pill, did you see the post I made on Instagram? Which one? The last post when I was talking about what happened and you didn't watch it. Okay. So, that, get, that goes to show you that Pill don't give a, once again, don't give a fuck about me and don't give a fuck about what's going on, nigga. That's crazy, yo. You don't even go look at your homeboy's Instagram page. Two days ago, uh... I'm commenting on my homegirl, Twitter. She say something pretty wild. And I, LOL. She said, I don't like ABCX, Y, and Z. Fuck that nigga. So, I thought she was talking about somebody else, honestly. Because their names is kind of similar. So, I went, LOL, shake my head. Because I think that nigga's a loser. So, I was like, yo, I'm just... I'm talking just about. Right, right. I thought the nigga, she was, in my mind, who that she was talking about, I was just co-signing on some shit. So, then, right after that... You know, I go back to work. I come back to my phone later on. A chick is like, yo, are you friends with ABCX, Y, and Z? Clarify, giving the whole person's name. And then she says, are you friends with him? I just want you to know that he's a rapist and that he's an abuser of women. And then she posts a picture of a woman saying, this person raped my homegirl who was underage Damn. And and when I conf when I tried to confront him about it, he threatened to shoot me. Damn. So I'm like, what? So then I call my homegirl up, like, deep. yo, what the fuck is going on with this shit, bro? So she tell me, yeah, uh, you know, this person has done this and that and the third. There's a thread with a bunch of women who have who are. Excuse me. I apologize. There's a thread on Twitter with a bunch of women who have been talking about their experiences with this guy, all of their horror stories. 
And she was like, I already didn't like him. He's already been a weirdo. He Damn. comes around to our, he comes around to a lot of the Baltimore clubs. This guy's from Baltimore. He's an activist from Baltimore. Uh, and he's an, he calls himself an artist. And AB says, Y and Z. So I was like, all right, so, you know, all these women come in Florida. Have they pressed charges? She's like, I don't really know a lot. You need to talk to the chick that hit you on Twitter. She is working with them, and she works in social justice or whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. So I get offline from Shorty. I go back to Twitter. I add her, like, yo, have these women gone to the police? Have you filed charges? Whatever, whatever. She flips out on me. What the fuck, nigga? The cops don't look out for black women. They don't respect us. You know, da da da. She say a bunch of wild shit, and I'm like, why is this chick acting so fucking crazy? Like, so then I DM her, and I'm like, look, I'm not trying to attack you. I'm just trying to get an understanding of what's going on. I'm like, yo, I'm a grown man. I'm old. Mm. So if you sending me a tweet talking about some dude with the expectation that I'm about to jump up and go take a baseball bat and bash this guy head in or Mr. Saver, you know what I'm saying? Which not, not, not let's not do that. You don't want to play around with this shit. I, I'm not in the space where I'm gonna cause bodily harm to somebody just because somebody sends me a tweet mm. and say something. Number one. Number two. If these young women have experienced this, and my limited Experience and limited knowledge. It's your press charges. That's the process that you should take to get justice in this particular scenario. So then she was like, I apologize. I, I thought you were just trying to say some shit to pass the moment. And we have a very in depth back and forth. And it came down to her feeling like, yo, black men haven't really been supporting black women. We have been enduring these situations. And she was just like, yo, we just looking for help. Wherever we can get it And you know And I'm like alright cool Well if you want I said my platform is open If y'all want to come and speak I'm like I would like you know I was actually asking the chick that had hit me I was like yo why don't you come on So then she's saying she don't want to speak for the women So I'm like well see if the women want to come on And then she's like well they don't want to talk So then I'm like How are you supposed to help if you ain't going to talk Thank you how you want our help if you ain't going to talk? So, at that point, in his frustration that you can hear in his voice, multiply that by 20 and that's where I was. Damn. Because I don't like, it triggers something in me. I got a niece. I got a goddaughter. That's more like a, that's a lot, more like a real life daughter to me. Mm. So, like, I got, and, and I have a lot of women around me. I don't want to, I never want to see anything happen to people that I love. So when I hear anything about women, I'm always immediately thinking about my family, my mother, my aunt, my, my nieces, my cousins. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that safety is always a paramount part of my life. I, there have been many times where I had to step the niggas because niggas getting out of pocket with my family. I ain't got no problem doing that. Let me tell you, when I was young, I was ready to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? You're not, finna, you, you're not doing that. Like, you're not doing nothing around my family. That's never going to happen. Like, I was never cool with that. You know, not even my male cousins. Nigga, ain't no, no, you ain't taking his booty hole. It's not happening. But anyway, let's get back focused. Uh, what? Yeah, no, that was, <laughs> I was just trying to bring some levity. But what ended up happening is her, like, going into a, whoa, what kind of platform you got, all this and that. And I'm just thinking to myself, yo, you got an issue. You trying to sit here and pre-qualify everybody? You want somebody to stand with you, but you trying to pre-qualify anybody to come stand with you. Either you want somebody to stand with you or you don't. Right. And if you don't want to stand and you want to sit here and try to pick everybody apart, you're not going to have no coalition. At all. Because everybody's not going to be perfect. So anyway, I went to my Facebook page, I mean my, my, my Instagram. I let my frustrations be known. Not necessarily frustrations, but my issue because I couldn't reconcile in my brain how do I help? How do I help my sisters? How do I help women? How do I help people who are dealing with some shit when they are not ready to take action? Saw that. You know what I'm saying? How do I? You know, and then and then how do I deal with the emotion? You just brought a tragedy to me. You just told me some shit that fuck with me. You got me ready to fight somebody. You got me ready to, like, there was a couple times I'm ready, because I, I know that person. I don't know him. He's not personally a friend of mine. I know him because I'm in this music and entertainment industry. So I see and meet a lot of people. I've met this nigga multiple times. We've dapped it up. 
we've exchanged jokes, kept it moving. But I know personally, I got homies that's homies with him. So it took a lot for me not to go calling niggas' phones and going, yo, what the fuck going on over there? Because actually in that thread, one of my homeboys was in there trying to defend this nigga. Oh, wow. While these girls are saying, well, he kept grabbing on me and he drunk as shit. And he goes, my homeboy goes, well, you know, he be getting drunk, he be wilding, but that's my man, though. No. Like, oh, boy. So... It took everything in my power not to call him and go, what the fuck is going on, bro? Because of the fact that if I start doing that, I'm kicking up dust. That's going to cause. And then, that, like, I, it took a lot of them for me to not bring this nigga name up. So now when I bring this nigga name up, I don't have no proof. I don't have no facts. I don't even have these women names. I don't know who they are. And for me to throw somebody's name out there, and sully somebody's name without any kind of proper information, yeah. what kind of person does that make me? Yeah. It was the, it was another moment also that I realized, damn, yo, I do have a megaphone, and I'm not talking about this podcast. This podcast is trash. Nobody listens. Don't, don't nobody really watch this motherfucker. It's just me, him, and probably the rest of the other 12 of y'all niggas that come tune into this bitch. Niggas. It's 12, 12 niggas that come in on a regular basis. 15, for real, for real. And y'all, and I love each and every one of y'all. Thank you so much, because y'all are the only ones that make it this far into a show. But, like, I have other people I can call who have bigger platforms, and they all have connections with this person. So even the mere mention of this person's name is going to put a whole lot of light on the scenario, either in a positive or a negative way. Well, there's no positive. This is all going to be negative. It's all going to be bad. And it comes down to this. Why am I bringing this up? Because, number one, it fucked with my spirit for, like, it still fucks with me. Because I still want to do something. I want to bust a nigga head open. I mean, that's rape, bro. That's like that you... I can't imagine somebody putting their hands on somebody I love and taking their innocence from them and thinking that I am going to let that shit slide. I will rape that nigga my motherfucking self. No. Oh, you want to take somebody goodies? I'm going to take... And I'm not gay by no. no stretch of the imagination. I don't want to fucking touch no nigga. But that's how much I want to fucking defile somebody. Yo, and then I want to take your life. Because I want you to feel that, and then you don't want you to die. Like, that's how I feel. But I'm old, and I'm not gay, so I'm not doing none of that no. shit. I'm not doing none of that shit. However, I'm willing to stand. It frustrates me because it's like, I can't go to the police. Because they're going to be like, nigga, what the fuck? Who is it? What's their name? Where they at? Right. Nothing we can do We don't, we don't have no information Right I can't go public And start talking shit Cause that's going Without no kind of information That puts me in a fucked up scenario a Real bad scenario For The friend Female friends When I made this post I DM'd a few of my friends And I said Please yo I need your perspective So Because I didn't know What to do Or how to deal with it so I reached out to my public because I was frustrated, and I'm like, yo, I need some information. So I would like to go through the comments of some of the beautiful people. And number one, I want to say thank you all for not about the comments. It's not about, oh, man, I got all these comments, and I got all these views. No. I thank these women for coming forth and telling me their stories so that I can get a better understanding of what's going on and how to deal with it. Now, I, there's a few of them I'm going to pick out, and we're going to go from there. So, shout out to, I'm not going to give out names. I'm just going to say, this is what some of the comments I've gotten. Uh, one young lady said, well, honestly, you can't really help until they are ready to make the necessary steps forward. Even if she is scared now, she won't be forever. As And she's referring to the women that were uh, defiled or raped or taken, you know, uh, whatever. Forever as she gathers her strength. It is not easy, but she will gain the strength. But there has to be a healthy measure of her own sanity as well. I unfortunately seen the other side of women handling this with a level of toxic behavior, spreading the story, but doing, but doing anything to protect themselves in hopes just tarnish the name and someone to stand with them out of anger with no action behind it. 
therapy, documentation, restraining orders, gun license, self-defense classes, etc. These things are necessary. These things are necessary. I've seen women wear sexual assault on them like a badge of honor, afraid to set themselves free from it. It's safe work and God. It's self-work and God. Then you take actions for your justice. So no matter what level of justice you receive, you free yourself. It's, it's a process, but the women have to walk towards it and be ready. If she's not ready, I don't think any of this matters. Just pray for her and give aid or an ear until she finds her strength. Bro, that is probably the most articulate <laughs> and well thought out answer. And I love her bringing to bear. And this is something I really, really want to tell my sisters and the women out here. I can help you. I can support you. I can back you. I can protect you. Fair. But you have to allow us Fair. to do that. Fair. But on top of that, I'm being here to, def to, to protect you and help you. But if I get knocked out. You still got to be able to protect yourself. You protect yourself too. So it's time for you to get that gun. Like I've had conversations. I, I told my goddaughter on the phone the other right. day. It's time. I'm taking you to gun classes and I'm getting you a gun. She 18. Yeah. I'm dead serious about that shit, bro. I can't. I'm, gonna, I'm about to set, set myself up for one, too. You need to be prepared to deal and handle any scenario that comes about. Not because we're not here or we're not capable or we don't want to do it. No. But I'm not here 24-7. Yeah. You moving on your own. And a lot of y'all independent. Y'all don't want nothing. You know, mm -hmm. da 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 So, uh, so thank you. Uh, and I'm going to say who that was. That was Hila Bay uh, from Gemini Scorpio Podcast. Thank you so much, Shell. That was such a a beautiful, amazing. you know, a, a response answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. All right. The next person. It's a male. I agree with the female most likely I, I agree with you that females most likely are scared due to retaliation. Also, by the time so much happened for so long, the guy has something over them by that point, unfortunately. I think as men, we would truly not understand why they might wait so long or how to help until they tell us. But we can reach out saying, hey, is there any way I can help? Look for hotlines or therapists, etc., or any other resources to slowly help as the as this would take time. At end of day, at the end of the day, the fear is a mental aspect. So we would have to gradually help even without knowing what to do in a positive way, like resources and education. Thank you. Yo, that is definitely a, a phenomenal, 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 phenomenal response. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, I don't think I want to read that right now. Uh, all right. So here's one really, really, really profound one. It was said, okay, so you asked for my input. The one woman may be fearful because the accused is well known in the streets. Prime example, I have a coworker whom was shot five times last year dealing with a nigga like this. She survived. Knowing trial is approaching, he has been trying to find her, reach out to people close to her like me who work, uh, who work with her. Let me explain something to you. When a woman or a man is a victim of rape, they feel comfortable reaching out. Don't, uh, don't judge. Help them. Go with them to the police. Never let them feel they are alone because that's where suicide comes in. She said, I'm a survivor. Facts. Whew. Facts. Yo, when she told me that, I almost cried. You know what I mean? Like, yo, she brought the suicide component in. It is. It's just real. She brought the, yo, the girl got shot five times. Five times. By the dude. And, then that and now she got to wait for court dates? Yo, <laughs> you get five times, they need to pull that motherfucking court case up, nigga. Like, yo, something, yo, something got to happen ASAP. So, like. I mean, and it goes on and on and on. I mean, there are literally 40 or 50 comments here from people. And then, um, now, there's a, there's a few really important ones I got in my DMs. Um, where do I want to go? 
Where do I want to go? Okay. Now, one of my female homies, she's different. Let me tell you like that. Uh-oh. She's different. She ain't really... She ain't really normal. And I'm not saying it in a bad way or like she's a weirdo or nothing. No, she's just different. She think different. She move different. So I sent her the video. And I was like, oh, I need your opinion. Yo, can you watch the video? Tell me what's going on. She said, not for me, G. <laughs> I got mad at first. I'm like, yo, what do you mean it ain't for you? She said, not interested in the topic. Uh, and then she asked me if I mass DM. And I was like, yes. I said, ah, she's like, ah, I got you. Thought these were coming straight to me. And I'm like, nigga, it was coming straight to you. I'm sending it to you because I want your opinion about it because she's an intelligent woman. And, you know what I mean, she really, when she get to talking about some shit, she give you some next level shit. And this is why, because even though she told me she wasn't going to talk about it, she, she talked about into it. <laughs> I was like, yo, uh, why are you not interested in speaking on the topic? She said, this doesn't add value to my life. And social media isn't the place to ask the question if you want a serious answer. Reach out to a trauma counselor for real advice. Oh, my. Hmm. So I was like, I think your position in life and experience lends to a unique perspective on subjects like this, even even with the fuck she had just said. Uh, she said, I'm very careful about what I consume, and I'm not a therapist. She's, I'm like, I know you're not a therapist. And then she says, serious matters should really be addressed by pros. I love helping people, but boundaries are important, and knowing what you are and are not equipped to handle is a major thing. Ooh. You help a rape victim by helping them find a trauma counselor. If they aren't willing to do that, they don't want help. They want pity. She said trauma is an industry. So I had to take a step back after that because it's... The answer is rough, but it's real. No, it's... it's, She's right... In the statement But she's also wrong Number one If she had taken that To the public space Somebody could have gotten Something out of that Yeah You know Giving somebody A raw real answer Saying yo This is an issue That needs to be dealt with And this is the person You need to talk to Yo This conversation Needs to end here And you need to take this To this level I respect her For having that answer However I don't think she really realizes that a lot of people don't know that that's the next step that they should take. I didn't even know what the fuck a trauma counselor was. I had to Google that shit. So, I'm only concluding this discussion in this place. A, I'm begging black women, please, I understand you're angry. I understand you're frustrated. I understand you guys are damaged. I understand y'all got a lot going on. But don't discount men's, black men's wanting to be there, needing to be there. We want and need to be there. We want to support you. We want to stand behind you. Shit, we want to marry you, have kids with you, spend the rest of our lives with you. But it is becoming harder and harder to to fulfill these expectations because we're not even brought into the mix to be a part of shit. We're not having conversation no more. One of my one of my closest my one of my lord one of my daughters, she grown. She was like, Yo, I went to a protest. And she's like, one of my female friends was coming from her house and was meeting me down at a protest. I didn't see her. I found out later on that the young lady was tried to hitch a ride with somebody to go to a protest in Baltimore. We talking about a young girl in Baltimore. Got picked up by a black man in a car that she didn't know. She he, she was taken to this guy's house in his car. He raped her. Damn. He let her go. She went home. She does not call the police. Mm. She don't call her big brother, her cousin, her daddy, her mama, whoever. But she ends up starting a conversation on social media about this person and the, and the incident. The guy then comes back and murders her. <laughs> How can I help you? That same person that told me the story about the young girl that gets murdered was raped multiple years ago. Told me about it. 
but wouldn't tell me who the guy was. Wouldn't give me any information. I still to this day keep asking her, who is this person? File charges on this person. And she says, I don't want to ruin this person's life. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Ruined your life. He, he is taking something from you. Yep, he could be. It could, you could be damaged in a way because that situation happened to you. Not only just that, my important thing that I kept saying to her, and I'm still telling her, is nobody becomes a murderer day one. No. Nobody becomes like a big rapist day one. Like it takes a act that is yeah. over. All right, he, he ain't want. He, 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 like, he was finger-popping a girl. She ain't really wanted to have him, but she let it happen. So then he go from finger-popping to this and this and that to now he taking the goodies. And now you let this shit happen, and now he like, oh, okay, this is cool. Until you get to a point where murder is an option. Mm-hmm. If you do not stop these individuals when they do things that are inappropriate, or if you do not have a discussion, not necessarily, and I'm not necessarily saying that I need to kill this guy or whatever, but if something inappropriate happens, like I, I, there was one comment in, in my DMs, and I, 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 I wish I had time to really get into it. She was talking about all of this stuff that she defined as rape. If a guy take the condom off, it's rape. If he, if he has sex with you while you sleep, it's rape. If y'all drunk and you have sex, that's rape. And I'm like, girl, do you know what you're doing? And I'm not trying to say you're wrong. But what you just did is incriminated every nigga yeah. from the time they was born to the time. I'm guilty of being with my girlfriend and, and taking a condom on. And, you know, you want to. I, 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 so is it is it is it rape if the female tells you to take the condom off on the other no, perspective? No, 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 no. Or it takes it off with her vagina and then is that rape? No, but once again, I'm not trying. To, I'm not here to have an argument or even a debate about what's rape and what's not rape. The point of the matter I'm trying to make is if that type of thing happens, have a discussion with somebody. Everything things need to be addressed, and to not address something. And to let that person go or leave that person and then allow that person to continue their life not being checked or brought into a place of knowing and understanding, guess what's going to happen? It potentially will happen again. And then what y'all do is you, you get frustrated, you get upset, you get angry. And then because the complexion of the person that did this to you, now you feel like well, everybody in that complexion is fucked up. Guess who does that? White people. Mm. Asian people. Like, yo, that's how racism get kicked off, bro. Ladies, you can't hate every black nigga or get mad at every black nigga because of the actions of a few or one or two or whatever. Right. And on top of that, you can't expect, because I've gotten... People, women coming at me and they little attitudes about, not saying little attitudes, but I've gotten people, women coming at me with the attitudes of, you need to do this. Bro, I'm trying to survive the same way you're trying to survive. So if you don't communicate to me what you need, I cannot reciprocate. Uh, If you need me to be aware, like, nigga, I had an artist call my phone after I posted that video and he was, yo, he was gone. Are you serious, nigga? There's dudes in our music industry in Baltimore that's raping women and taking... Because I know four different guys that I've tried to get women to put reports in on that they wouldn't, that are still moving around in Baltimore City that have raped women and beat women. What you want me to do, cuz? You want me to start killing niggas? And then the moment I do that, the first thing y'all going to do is turn your back on me anyway and talk about how I'm a... Oh, he a murderer. He just... Oh, he's a, he a 41-year-old man. You a grown man out here acting crazy and da 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 So we need to start finding productive ways to move together as a community and as a group. I'm open. If you need help, if you need somebody to hold your hand, if you need somebody to be there for you, if you need somebody to, yo, and within reason, because I still have a life to live, but that does not mean I don't want to be there for you. Yo, I'm willing to work with you and any group to amass change, but we all have to take the appropriate steps that we have to take, meaning that you need therapy, you need to get healthy, you need to get into the right mental space, I need to get into the right, I need to continue to educate and speak on this subject, and yes, I need to be holding my 
male friends accountable for their actions. You can ask Pill, you can ask Will, you can ask all of my other niggas. We hold each other accountable. I don't have no problem with some shenanigans, but I do have a problem with treating a woman a woman outside of the space of respect. Like, yo, we got to hold each other. I hold everybody accountable. But when I hold these motherfuckers accountable, don't sit here and be like, you trying to be somebody forever. Or all that stupid shit that y'all say. Nah, that's not what that is. If I'm holding niggas accountable, y'all need to back niggas the fuck up. The same way, and I hate to even bring this around, but this goes back into my frustration with Baltimore City and this music industry and this art industry about y'all want to talk about be people need to build a platform. You need to build businesses. Yo, we need to have our own shit. I built a platform. We made that shit successful. We made that shit work. And we gave and gave and gave to the community, and the community didn't give us shit. And we ended up shutting down the radio station because you motherfuckers didn't want to support. You had everything you needed. You had everything you needed, bro. And more. Because I kept adding and adding and doing everything I could. Yo, if y'all want to see something different happen, you got to start moving different, bro. That's true. You got all of these new platforms coming up. Treat them differently than you treated me. Y'all better start supporting Liquor with Friends and Not Safe for Ears and Gemini Scorpio Podcast and this and that and the third. Y'all better start fucking supporting these niggas, man. And I ain't talking about, oh, I just click on it and click off. No, nigga, you need to be watching, commenting, donating, supporting, buying T-shirts. Where's Buffy? Y'all need to start supporting these niggas that's really moving and making shit happen, bruh. Because these are the people that can report your stories when shit go wrong. These are the people that can hold the music industry accountable when they not moving the way they should. We are the ones that are holding these artists accountable for creating greater product. That's why I do reviews. It ain't just so I can make fun of niggas. It's because I really want niggas to create the best quality work that they can to be the best representation of our scene. Come on, niggas. Let's go. We support Baltimore. All day. And then this is worldwide. I ain't asking niggas to be, you know... On some different shit, if you in New York, yo, support your New York platforms. Support your New York artists and hold them to a higher standard. Come on, bro. Y'all get what the game is. If we in the South, we in wherever. Like, that's what I know. That's what we doing. So, we're going to go to a commercial. We'll be right back. Y'all keep it locked. Aries Lounge, VVCRadio.com. Blah! And we're back. All right. So, this is the last thing for the night, and we can go to f- f- fuck on. <sighs> Pills got to go. In just a minute. Ten things. Ten things to do after the riots as a black person. I'm bringing this to the table because I feel like this is important. All right. So, I've got 12 things. (laughs) And I actually got more than that. But, do you want me to do my serious shit first and then we have some fun? Or should we have some fun first and then get into the serious shit after? Do your serious shit right All now. righty you then. Got some, you got some, yeah. JS1's 10 things that need to happen as a as you need to do, you, as a black person. Or any person. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care what culture you in. This is a universal source code for what the fuck you need to be doing so that you and your community can be strong and prevent Outside influences from affecting your progress, your stability, your family, and your culture. Number 10, stop asking for shit and stop being emotional. Really? The reason why I'm saying that, stop asking for shit because ain't nobody going to give shit to you. Don't nobody give a fuck. Black people, you really think these people in the government give a fuck about anything you're saying? Reparations or equal pay or you know not killing you. These white people don't give a fuck. <coughs> they don't give a fuck. So stop asking. Stop crying. Stop begging. Stop peaceful marching and y'all need to do this and telling telling white people, or Asian people, all these people what they should do to treat you better. That that because it ain't it's non productive. And stop being emotional. Yes, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Get mad. Stop being emotional. Get it out your system. Yo, bang on the walls and cry and scream and complain behind closed doors at, to yourself at the wall. 
But when you step outside of the house and get in front of a camera or get in front of these phones, stop being emotional. Start thinking logistically because emotion ain't doing nothing but keeping you out of sorts. You ain't learning shit. You ain't solving shit. You just reacting. Just niggas online all day long reacting. Oh, 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 they killing us. Or you mad, I'm going to kill all you white folk and y'all getting out here fist fighting with niggas and doing dumb shit. And that shit ain't solving a motherfucking thing. It ain't doing nothing. All that emotion and anger and visceral shit. Guess what you're doing? You're wasting time. You're wasting energy and you're wasting breath. Time to get educated. Time to focus on solutions. And getting emotional. Just You know what? Emotion is a, is a reference point so that you understand what you need to be doing from a moral and personal position. That's it. I feel pain in my foot. Oh, shit. There's a nail in it. Not, I need to run around the city and be like, I got a nail. You want to see it? <laughs> Pill, there's a nail on my foot. How dare the nail be in my foot? Who put the nail on the ground? How did the fucking nail get there? How the fuck did it get? How did I forget to take a look before I stepped? Oh, God, the nail. The nail. Oh, God, the nail. Let's get the nail out of the foot. Take the nail out your foot <laughs> and put on some fucking shoes. Yeah, that's the solution. <laughs> about the history of nails and how they got in the feet. I didn't need a historical documentation of nails and how it, it relates to feet in different time periods in history or the different types of nails. Yo, nigga. And the only reason why I'm being emotional in this moment is because black people don't take to simple, straightforward discussion. If I was to speak in a monotone fashion and just look at the camera and say, ladies and gentlemen, you should do this. Guess what? You wouldn't pay attention. Wouldn't pay attention you would click off. So guess what? I'm using emotion as a way to convey my position and my thoughts. They still might not listen. So what? But you can't say I didn't tell yeah, you. Yeah, you tried. Number nine, pay attention to history and make adjustments. Hey, dumb niggas. The ones that didn't like history class and all these people that don't watch documentaries or don't want to watch anything about the history channel or don't want to read books or don't want to, under, you know, don't want to read biographies. Why do I read biographies? Why do I watch documentaries? Why do I like going to history places? Why do I like reading history? It's because has this shit happened before? Yeah. Has people had experiences similar to mine in the past? How did they deal with it? And how did that result? How did black people deal with racism 50 to 100 years ago? And how, what were the results of those actions? And what did it get us? Also, let me look and see if other cultures have experienced the same things I have experienced. How did they deal with it? What were the results? Research and development. So once you do the research and development, you make adjustments accordingly this has not worked historically for humans so we have done this instead of that they went left every time this happened they got killed so maybe it's time for us to go right hmm i wonder next number eight reprogram your habits to create the best and most productive version of yourself if eating pizza every day and eating wings and smoking cigarettes and cigars and drinking alcohol has resulted in you being a fat fuck or a lazy <laughs> motherfucker. Or you have not been able to get out past a certain point in your life. Change. You might need to stop eating pizza and wings and drinking and smoking to get different results. That makes sense, Jerry. Kind of goes back to what I said earlier. Well, I stopped drinking and I stopped smoking. And I put myself on a diet and I started working out. Because I need different results. I'm not, I mean, and let me clarify something. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about any of you fuck ass niggas that have jokes about me being fat and having man tits. I've had these man tits for 40 fucking one years. And I don't give a fuck. The only reason why I'm doing this shit is because there are things that I want to acquire in my life. And I have not been able to do it in my current physical and mental state. So I need to make changes because I am determined to get what the fuck I want for my life and for my children and for my family and for my legacy. Motherfucker. <clears throat> Number seven, generate and save large amounts of money. I wonder why. 
Do I need to explain that too? Do I? I don't. I shouldn't have to explain why you need money. You might need to. I'm not doing it. Number six, get a gun license and acquire multiple weapons of varying types. I'm not just trying to tell you to go out and get a gun or get a shotgun. No shotgun. You might need a taser. You might need some pepper spray. Because you may not get the license to carry the fucking firearm. But I'm not saying go out here and be completely, you know. Naked. Yeah, naked, nigga. You might need to get you a baton. You might need to get you an extendo bat thing. You know what I'm saying? The little metal things that yeah. extend out. Yo. I knew that since I was a kid. Nigga, I used, I've been collecting knives and all type of weaponry shit. There's all type of weaponry around this house, believe it or not. You know, and some of it is illegal, but still, I'm about to get legal. That's the point I'm trying to make is protect yourself. Get what you need to protect yourself. Because as you, as, as you acquire more finances, resources, and assets, people will want to take it from you. So you need to be ready to protect yourself. Take classes, excuse me, number five, take classes on the proper use of the weapons you purchase and practice weekly. Take classes, I'll repeat it again, take classes on the proper use of the weapons you've purchased and practice weekly. Number five, be the healthiest version of yourself. Diet, exercise, therapy, vacations, and time for self are necessary to live a good life and be the most help to your family, children, friends, and community. And to yourself. Unhealthy people spread unhealthy habits, opinions, vibrations to the world around them. If you are not adding positive and productive information and habits to the people around you, guess what? You're poisoning the next person next to you. So your stupid shit becomes they stupid shit. And then they stupid shit because the next nigga stupid shit. And guess what? Y'all running around emotional and stupid doing dumb shit. And ain't nothing productive coming out of that. So, it's time for us to do better for ourselves so that we can do better for the people around us. He's preaching, guys. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <sighs> Number four, learn to manage your life schedule. Make sure you're including social activities, political activities, family activities, financial health, mental health activities frequently into your schedule. And I say that for all of the people that say, I ain't got time to go to a rally. I ain't got time. To I ain't got time. That's because you don't know how to fucking manage your time. You got time for what you want to make time for. Goddamn right. Simple as that. Number three, acquire resources of all types. Network with other black people or people of your culture to build wealth and power. Do I really need to explain why that's necessary? I didn't think I needed to. <sighs> Number two, leverage wealth and power to secure the respect and safety of you, your family, and your community. If the system still won't conform, use your wealth, power, and weapons to destroy the system and, and or leave the system for a place we can build and maintain and control of our own. I'm going to read that one more time. Okay. Leverage wealth and power to secure the respect and safety of you, your family, your community, your loved ones. If the system still won't conform, use your wealth, power, and weapons to destroy that system or leave the system for a place we build, control, and maintain of our own. So, if you have done everything before this that I've mentioned from getting your health right, Re-educating and educating yourself, learning how to use weapons, acquiring weapons of multiple types, stockpiling, you building resources, financial resources, real estate assets, and you've done your research, you know about history, you know about this, you know about that, you've built a network of individuals who are all doing the same thing in a positive manner, and you all have now built wealth, you've built power, you've built resources... And now you have the ability to now approach a system and to manipulate the system using what you've built. And with the knowledge, you can make smarter moves. So now you can elect people because you've taken the time to be a part of political activities. So you know who's going to do what you want to do. You know who you can control. And then you can put people in power that you can control. 
And if that doesn't work because the system is so broken that the money you've invested and the people that you've put in position and all of these things that you've tried to do, if that don't work, you still have the guns and you still have the wealth and you still have the resources to kill each and every person that is not doing what you want to do and you rebuild what you do want. And if you don't want to do that because that's not the type of person you are, which I totally understand, then you pack up your ball and your fucking shit and you go somewhere else. Because you got the money, power, and resources. So go buy your own island. Go buy a whole section of a country. Rebuild. And rebuild on your own shit and with your own military, your own might, and say, fuck everybody, we got our own shit. Real fucking simple. Did I once say something about begging somebody for some shit? No. No, no. Have I sat here and cried about how the nail is in my foot? No. No, no. These are, these are solutions, tangible, equitable solutions. Number one, we must write our stories. We must recount our history. We must teach our children about our black American culture. And I say black American culture because we're not Africans. Have you ever been to Africa? Nope. Oh, boy. Has your grandparents been to Africa? Mm, nope. My parents went to Africa to visit, but they wasn't living there and they weren't from there. So black American culture. So we need to... Acknowledge the fact that we do have a culture. If you go to Africa and offer niggas pig feet, they like, what the fuck is pig feet? We have our own culture. We need to preserve our culture. We need to celebrate our culture. We need to celebrate the successes. We need to celebrate the losses, the tragedies. Yes, I love, I hate fucking slave movies. But it is necessary because there are a ton of dumb young black people that really can't comprehend slavery. So, yes, that is a part of us documenting our history. However, we need more Madam C.J. Walker miniseries showing us being successful. We need more stories of black people becoming millionaires and becoming powerful people. We need that. We need to document the successes of our people. We need the little Richard stories and all of this. And, yo, we don't have to. And I'm not trying to. And once again, after talking about rape for 45 minutes, I'm not trying to say we should sweep somebody's gross incompetence or, or things that were not correct under the rug. But can we do one film? where we celebrate somebody without showing them, knocking a bitch across the room or doing some crazy shit. Bro, I have seen mad fucking movies of fucking white celebrities that have done fucked up shit to people. And they didn't put the shit in the film because it was all about inspiration and positive reinforcement. So, like, look, you know, let me get a Ray Charles joint without him being a womanizer. Please, let's do that. (sighs) We are in a time period where the winners don't just get to document the history. Because obviously they're going to paint it to their advantage. Hmm. We still can document our history. So let's get the fucking work. Because guess what? It's going to embolden the next generation to have positive images that they can use as resources to help make their decisions for the future. One of the problems that we have, one of the reasons why us as a collective have low self-esteem is because we spend damn near zero time Showing the reason why we should have high self-esteem outside of fucking rappers and basketball players. And them niggas is losers. Yeah, I said it. And I'm a rapper. <coughs> now, these are some extra ones. And I'm just going to do the one extra. And I skipped maybe one or two. But I just wanted to kind of keep it at 10. But now this is 11. Or we went from one. So one plus one. Look at other cultures, i.e. China, the Jewish community, Germans, Swiss, etc. Damn. And how they have dealt with oppression and tragedy. These are clues to how we can better our own culture. If you're watching this and you made it this far, first of all, kudos to you. Second of all, do you know... And I'm asking you this question. I'm asking you too. Do you know... When World War II, what happened to China? Do you know what happened to China? No. Do you know what China's involvement was in World War II? No. <laughs> Do you know anything about the, the Jewish Holocaust? Yes. 
What do you know about the Jewish Holocaust? Outside of their skins being used to create lamps, which I thought was a really weird and an amazing thing. Um, it was all about... Uh, Hitler was all about um, trying to create his own. His, you know, his, Master his, race. Yeah. Right. And what did they do after they came out of that Holocaust? What did... Who did? The Jewish community. They came together. Uh-huh. In which way? In, the, in a positive way. And they support their own. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see this? This is a prime example of what I'm talking about. Germans, after, after World War II and we des- desecrated the Germans, what did they do? I don't know. What did they do? Uh, the Swiss, <laughs> being the avid middle people in every war. Oh. What has maintained Swiss to being untouched? And, and I'm talking about Swiss. We're in the middle of World War II. Nigga, niggas was not fucking with the Swiss. You want to know why? No, why? You don't know why. Come on, bro. You know why. Why? Swiss had the most trusted banks and had a lot of resources that were utilized by all sides. That makes sense. If you got everybody money... Can't nobody fuck with you. Well, I mean, they, they can, but uh, why would I want to fuck up some shit? Because then I'm fucking up my own money. I'm fucking up my own. Yeah, that makes sense. Smart. If I'm German and Germany and we just lost the war and they strip away everything from us. Look at, just do some Google searches, people. Germany is now... Shit, Germany is now like the strong, one of the strongest countries in the EU. European Union, nigga, because you're looking at it like you ain't understand what the fuck EU meant. What that was. European Union. Okay. To go in a lifetime, in one lifetime, to go from complete disaster to being back on the world stage as a world power. They didn't do it by crying and saying, you guys beat us up, man. <laughs> we beat up, man. Y'all killed us, nigga. We were sorry. We ain't mean to make skin skin lamps. Like they got back in their shit. They re-educated their people. They built their infrastructure. They built become they became back they went back to work and became a financial power. And they shut the fuck up and kept moving. Bro, China. At the end of World War II, China, Russia. Japan and a few other people, they were the, the bad guys. China sent mad planes, was killing damn near everybody, and there and everybody. So a part of their a part of their treaty for them to not be eradicated off the world was their military, they could only have like planes, a certain amount of planes, and they couldn't have a whole bunch of boats. Why? Just give me a guess why they don't want you to do that. To fear of takeover? Exactly. Because how many people are in China? Billion. Two billion. So, if two billion niggas decide to get on planes and on boats and just decide a billion niggas want to go take a vacation in Africa, who really going to stop that? So, after World War II, we limited their military capability. We limit. Whoa, I'm sorry. We dropped a fucking nuclear bomb on these niggas, and we dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan. By the way, we left these niggas fucked up, broke as fuck, because they ain't had no money and they fucking currency was dirt poor, and they had limited military resources. That was '65. What is something? It was a long time ago. Who is probably the number one enemy that we have right now on the world stage? China. Why is that? After all that shit we did to them, after all of these rules we imposed on them, what the fuck do you think these niggas did? Well, I think who did? China did? Hell yeah. I know we owe China a shit ton of money. Well, how the fuck did we get to owing them money? Because they got fucking bread. Because they went back and realized we can't be a military force The only way that we can fight on the world stage is, number one, manufacturing, generating. We can build everything for everybody. So if we build everything for everybody, you can't fight us. 
We use all of that money to build infrastructure and to reinvest in the technology. So not only are they manufacturing everybody's shit, they're developing new technology and whatever they can't develop, they just fucking steal. So we don't know how to design an iPhone, but we make the iPhone, so we'll just take all of the technology out of that and then we create our own versions for our own shit. We, they became a financial and a technological, they became an industrial, technology, mm. and financial powerhouse. Mm. Because there was nothing in, a, in their agreement that says that they couldn't become that. And on the world stage, they started investing. They are investing in a feverish pace. That's why they got kicked out of Africa. They started investing trillions of dollars in mm. Africa. To this day, the reason why we can't really go to war with China is because China literally owns every major port in the United States. Guess who owns the ports downtown? China? Guess who owns the ports in, <laughs> in California? All of them. China? Guess who owns all of the ports in New York? China? Yes, <laughs> Florida. <laughs> who owns the ports in Miami? Miami? No, <laughs> China. <laughs> They own large swaths of real estate. They are invested and in divested in the entire U.S. economy. If China goes down, we go down, and vice versa. Yep. So you can't fight it. The point I'm trying to make, how many moves have we made as a black community to do the same thing? Even though the fact that we spend trillions of dollars, we just randomly spend it. There's no controlled spending. At the end of the day, the point I'm trying to make is education, bro. Education Reprogramming I can go on forever I haven't even touched the Jewish community He was probably the most skilled At coming out of a, a Crazy Devastating situation And have become on a, on, a, on a quiet level I mean it ain't really that quiet Fucking international powerhouses And that community is not in the billions Like China Black people Hello, turn off the TV, stop worrying about clothing lines and fucking name brands, stop worrying about niggas dropping albums, put your fucking face in a goddamn book, and if you don't like books, start watching documentaries, start Googling, start researching, start saving your fucking money, because Yeezys ain't going to stop a bullet, my nigga, but deep bank accounts can Guns can. Control resources can. Being able to call the fucking head of the police. Who's the head of police in Baltimore City? Uh, what's his name? Mmm, that really helps me. Hey, uh, 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 Google. Okay, Google. Find what's his name. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't understand. <sighs> this is the end of the show. Please. Enjoy yourselves. I also need to know which device to use. Try saying that again and include the device's name. Go, uh, Google, stop. See what you did? Just the end of the show. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> go find something to do with your life. <sighs> support a black business. But don't do no goofy shit, y'all. So, so really support a black business. Show somebody some love today. Listen to a podcast. Drop a comment. Hit the donate button. And then get back to doing your research and development. Teach your children something more valuable. Stop pushing your responsibilities off on technology. I swear to God, if I see another parent give a fucking tablet to a kid and shove them off into a corner, I will kill both of you. I'm sick of it. Invest your time like it matters. Because you don't have a lot of it. I know niggas think that you got forever, but you really fucking don't. That's true. Life's short. If black lives really matter, the funniest part is the black lives matter whole concept. You should be talking to yourself and talking to other black people. Stop worrying about white people. Because obviously black lives don't matter to you. Your ass can't fucking go on a diet. Black lives don't matter to you. You don't even want to get educated. Black lives obviously don't matter to you because you don't want to even take some information and give your children a better space for yourself. Better, better space than yourself. If black lives really matter, show me something different. Stop fucking crying online and wasting my time. Yo, 
And girls, I'm done. We'll check you next week. More shit coming. VVCRadio.com. We out. Peace.